95 years ago, it, it happened here, and it, they lost the game to Owu, but it was a 14-0 loss. But how about this, Don Rinker? They were able to get 14,000 people here. The most people to ever watch a game in Wittenberg Stadium was the dedication back in 1923. Ninety-five years ago on this field. That star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the brave All right. Marching Cougar Band would now like to present a tradition at every home game. It's their script, KRHS. Our script is led on the field by senior student directors Rena Kitchen and Jeremy Muller. All right. By the way, I'm working on putting together a stage over there on the hospital field next week for game day at Wittenberg. Next week I'm going to try to put it together and have it over there with all the people. How I'm going to do it, I don't know, Jim, but we're going to do it. I can pull them off because I have Jesus. Bump. Bum 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 ba dum ba dum huh? For us? Okay, right tackle is on offense is seventy nine. Is seventy nine. And what's his name? Okay, Bryson Bryson Owens. Okay, let me get rid of him too. Cosmos, Katzenzero, and it's Quimby. What's his name? Oh, 84. Did you get that, Scotty?
Today's. The Wittenberg Tigers meet the DePaul Tigers here this afternoon in Springfield. Hi, everybody. It's game number seven of this 2018 Wittenberg football season. I'm Scott Leo, joined by the coach, Jim Scobie. The captains are meeting at midfield, and Wittenberg has, I believe, won the toss, and they will defer until the second half, so DePaul will get it first as 6-0 Wittenberg, ranked eighth in the nation in the American football Coaches Association poll and 14th in the D3Football.com poll takes on a DePaul Tigers squad that is three and three, three and two against the North Coast Athletic Conference. And Coach Scobie, welcome back for another week. We are again broadcasting from the cabin here, our temporary broadcast spot for this 2018 season. Wittenberg coming off of a win at Allegheny last Saturday where they struggled a bit in the first half. As uh, Joe Fincham said this week, we were sputtering a bit in the first two quarters, but then scored 31 unanswered points and rolled to a 41-14 win. Yeah, I think what we talked about on Thursday night on our Tiger Up Sports Show, I, I think what Coach really liked was the ability of his team to be able to be consistent, to go uh, a long ways away from home, which Meadville is, and to be able to play with confidence. Uh, his team was not bothered. Uh, by the rain, it was the conditions were, were kind of rough. But uh, again, a great job by his team and his staff to stay together and, and get another victory uh, against Allegheny. Today's a little different. Uh, a team that in DePaul that uh, has a great defense, a, a team that uh, uh, rushing defense is fourth in the nation. They only give up 39 yards of rushing. So we'll see what Wittenberg can do today, a team that, Needs to have that balance. Of course, Jake Kennedy having one of his best years. They're the number one offense in the NCAC in every category. We'll see what the Tigers do today. It's a Wittenberg squad scoring almost 47 points per game, eighth best in the nation. They'll try and have success on the ground against DePaul. That might be tough, as you said, but through the air, teams are uh, able to throw the ball against this DePaul team. They're giving up 270 passing yards per game the most in the NCAC. Adam Aquista kicks it away, and on the return for DePaul, picking it up off the carpet is Andy Hunt inside his own 15, and he'll race out to the far side of the field to the sideline. Out of bounds he goes at the 28. So that is where DePaul will start their first possession of the afternoon. Mostly sunny skies, temperatures reaching the 50s today, 54 degrees for the opening kickoff. There is a chance for rain Later on, maybe around 3 o'clock or so, hopefully it will stay away until after this one is over. Yeah, Scott, they're talking about beautiful weather till 3, a lot of wind at 3, so very important for wh whatever the offenses are doing to get it done early. The wind is coming out of the south end zone now, so DePaul looking right into it as their offense goes to work, and they'll hand it off on first down. Chase Andres and Cam Haynes have both seen time at the quarterback spot for DePaul this year after – Matt Labus, their starter, tore his ACL in the first game of the season, lost for the year. It's Andres that gets the start today, the sophomore from Pittsburgh, Indiana. And on a handoff, they'll get maybe a half a yard. Tanner Cleveland, Jake Weber, DeMarco Henry all share time at the tailback spot. Andres will throw to the far sideline on second and nine. It's behind the receiver, incomplete. That was Logan Green. He's one of their top pass catchers, along with Andy Hunt, and Will Harris, last week DePaul managed only 12 points against Denison, but had the big red on the ropes. They led 12 to six 
but Dennison scored twice in the final two minutes. Well, and the win. problem there, Scott, was they couldn't punch it in the end zone. They had four kicks, uh, field goals in that game, all by Jake Tanner, one of the best uh, kickers in the game in the NCAC. He's eight of nine right now. Third down and nine. Andres will throw an incomplete outside the hash mark on the left. He was trying to hit Andy Hunt. And he fires it behind the senior receiver. So Andrews missing on a couple of early opportunities through the air. It'll be a three and out as DePaul will punt. They're kind of surprised that uh, Cam Haynes is not in there. He, he came in with 85 throws, uh, good catches for 868, eight TDs, and five interceptions. Kind of surprised that uh, they didn't start Cam right away, and all of a sudden, Tigers get him to have to kick the ball. Ty Johnson, the DePaul punter, a low spiraling kick, and it'll bounce at the Wittenberg 35, take a DePaul hop inside the 30, and it's down at the 29. So that is where Wittenberg's offense goes to work. Evans Cribs, the guy that downs it for the DePaul Tigers. So, Wittenberg's first offensive possession of the day with 14-12 to play in the first quarter. Jake Kennedy, the three-year starter at quarterback, the senior from Bell Fountain, is now Wittenberg's all-time career passing yards leader, and he needs just eight more touchdown passes to take over the top spot there as well. He's chasing his offensive coordinator, Reed Florence, for that record. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, and Kennedy will have Nick Kendall, in the backfield with him. Jake calls the cadence, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looks downfield. He's going to fire it deep for Snodgrass, but he overthrows Thad Snodgrass inside the DePaul 25-yard line. Snodgrass, the Springfield native, has been the Tigers' deep threat the last two years. Yeah, and again, uh, right away, Jake Kennedy pretty pumped up, and you can tell he threw that about 10 yards uh, beyond his receiver. Thad Snodgrass, again, one of the top receivers, had 13 catches so far for 307 yards. He's third in the NCAC in touchdowns with six. Movement up front for Wittenberg before this second down and 10. Gunnar Doran, the freshman from West Jefferson, starts too soon, and it moves Joe Fincham's team back five yards. The Tigers head coach in his 23rd season, 207 wins, 44 losses, the 1988 Ohio University grad, 10-time NCAC Coach of the Year, and his team have won, has won seven of the last nine conference titles. Trying to wrap up another one with wins in the coming weeks this year. Option play to the right on second and 15 as Kennedy pitches it down near the 20-yard line and back out to the 25 goes the ball carrier. That was Sam Kayser. Kayser, the wide receiver turned running back. Maybe gets a yard to the 26. It'll bring up third down and 14. Kayser, I got to talk to his daddy, Tom Kayser. They had a little pump-up uh, group up there up on the hill by the hospital getting ready for the game, and he's excited for his young man. And, again, here's a situation where Jake Kennedy, early on against a very good defense that's got 24 sacks, he's going to have to go third and about 13. Four receivers set, Kennedy, the snap, throws up the middle of the field, has a man across the 40, it's Liam Duncan. Makes the catch, spins away from the defensive back and goes down at the Wittenberg 47-yard line. So they needed 13, they pick up 21, make it 22, they'll put him at the 48 as Kennedy finds Liam Duncan, the senior from Eugene, Oregon. Liam with uh, now his 14th catch of the year, Eight TDs, he's eighth in the NCAC, and again, when you need somebody to make a play, Liam Duncan is that guy that uh, certainly Jake Kennedy looks to. Motion man goes from left to right, it's Noah Danke. High snap for Kennedy, hands it to Nick Kendall, running right, and he's going to be undercut and dropped for a loss back at the 47. Kendall, the Indianapolis native, has played well against the likes of DePaul and Wabash in the last couple of years, the Indiana opponents on the Wittenberg schedule. We'll see if he has a couple of big games coming up for Kendall. And the stop was made by Hunter Sego, the safety from Madison, Indiana, the senior. It is a loss of two. Scotty, they do a great job. They've got, and I'll talk about their, their interior, the front seven that are up there, the, the linebacking core, and also the defensive tackles and nose guard. Three receivers set. Kennedy to throw it on second and long over the middle. The tight end. Danke wow. makes the catch. And he is pulled down at the 42-yard line right at 
the first down marker in DePaul territory. So it is a gain of 12, and the headlinesman says move the chains. First down, Wittenberg. Yeah, Noah Danke, again, one of those guys that uh, we don't hear a lot about. He plays fullback and also some tight end, but that time he was able to make the catch. He's out of Canton, Ohio. Maslin Jackson, 6'1", 220, senior from there. Three receivers left, shotgun snap to Kennedy, handoff Kayser, and he's going to be bowled over back at the 44. Once again, this DePaul defense, one of the best in the country, stopping the run, and they're showing that here early on, a loss of a couple. Yeah, they have shut teams down all year long. Again, they only give up 39 yards per game. That time, again, great pressure. They've got a couple guys that come up there strong. Nate Orison leads the NCAC with 30 or I should say with uh, 9.5 sacks. Joe Zanka's up there with four sacks, and Barry Goode with three sacks. Typically a 3-4 look for Bill Lynch's defense, but four across the front here. Kennedy fakes a handoff, he'll keep it. Shakes free of a man at the 43, inside the 40, down to the 35, and racing out of bounds, the senior quarterback Kennedy down. at the 31-yard line. It is a pickup of 13, and it should be another Wittenberg first down. Kennedy has not rushed the ball a ton this year. That's his 30th rushing attempt, but it comes at a good time as Wittenberg moves the sticks. And again, they're loading up uh, that front line. They've got everybody up front trying to stop the run, a good fake up the middle. You might see this a lot today from this offense. Jake Kennedy, again, faking it, taking the run, making a nice move, and getting that extra yard for a first down. Move the chains, first and 10. Kennedy in the shotgun. Jaheim Washington checks in at tailback. They'll throw it into the flats. Kayser has it at the 29, far sideline to the 25, and two DePaul Tigers there to make the tackle near the 23, a pickup of close to eight. Kennedy to Kayser, the sophomore from Portsmouth Notre Dame High School. Wide receiver turned running back, but sometimes they line him up as a wideout, and they did there. He's got a brother about six foot eight that plays on the uh, basketball team, eighth grader. Can you believe that? And again, I got to talk to him today, but uh, the Kaysers are very proud of their boys. They've had some great athletes. Kennedy has four receivers to work with here. 10-10 to play, first quarter, opening drive for Wittenberg. Kennedy wants to throw deep to the end zone. Kayser, and it's through his hands in the back corner of the end zone against that end line. Sam unable to hold on. And it'll bring up third and short. A great job by the quarterback, Jake Kennedy. He felt the pressure. He understood it, and he still had the willingness to step into his throw. He made an accurate pass, just couldn't hold on to it. Uh, Duncan there in the end zone, but a great play call, and now third and short. It'll be Bryce Bailey with Jeff Tiffner, receivers to the near side. One receiver wide right, and that is Snodgrass. Kennedy turns towards the near sideline. He's got Kendall in the backfield with him. Jake now steps up behind the O-line, changes the protection, takes the snap, hands it off. Kendall running left, needs to get down to the 21, but he's going to be thrown down. Matt Krupe, the inside linebacker out of Westfield, Indiana, makes a nice stop, keeping Wittenberg shy of the marker. So it's fourth and three, and Joe Fincham wants to send on the kicking team to try and get on the board with a field goal. And again, uh, a great defensive play by Krupe, and he's the number five NCAC tackler. He's now got 50 on the year. Michael Ford will hold. Noah Danke, the long snapper, it's back. Off the left hash mark, kick is away from Aquista, and it is good. Sneaks it inside the left upright. Aquista, the senior kicker, does his job to Put an exclamation point on the end of this first Wittenberg drive. And with 9.28 to play in the first quarter, it's Wittenberg three and DePaul nothing. And so Coach Scobie, the Tigers able to move the football down the field, mostly through the passing game. Kennedy was three of five for 41 yards. But they get close enough to get a field goal and get on the Scoreboard here on their first possession of the day. Great kick by Aquista. He has had a 45-yarder. That's been his longest all year, but this one was 41. So in the groove right now, a, a nice possession to go down on your second possession and go down and get uh, some points. Again, points are going to be critical today against this DePaul defense. And, again, it was the passing game that was – Fortunate, a couple really good passes. Duncan had a 21-yard catch. Danke, a 12-yard catch. Kennedy had a 13-yard run. And, of course, they get the field goal. Adam Aquista now 7 of 8 on field goals this year. 
As you said, it's a 41-yarder. Kick is away, Hunt on the return, out across the 20 to the 25, tackled on the far side numbers. And so DePaul will get its second possession of the game with 9.22 left to play in this first quarter. Wittenberg three, DePaul nothing. 13th meeting all time between these teams. Wittenberg has won nine of the previous 12. Wittenberg has not lost to DePaul here in Springfield since DePaul joined the conference in 2012. The one win for DePaul during the time that they've shared the same conference came at DePaul three years ago. Here's a handoff on first and 10, and it'll be DeMarco Henry out of Ben Davis High School in Indianapolis running right up the gut for a yard to the 27. Tackle on the play by inside linebacker Terrence Crow, a local here in Springfield. He's got 47 tackles. He's seventh in the NCAC coming in. He's got a couple interceptions. He's got a couple sacks. So Terrence Crow, again, one of the top defenders here in the NCAC. His little brother, Tavion Crow, part of the defensive line. I say little, but Tavion, 6'2", 270. Handoff, and this is Cleveland on second and nine. Bounces off the line, tries to extend the play out to the left, and that's a bad move. Troy Jones is there to round him up. Also in on the stop was Kyle Derringer, the senior out of Versailles High School. A loss of two, third and 11 for DePaul from their own 25. Yeah, Tanner Cleveland again, one of those outstanding running backs out of uh, Napanee, Indiana, Northwood High School, and uh, he's came into this game with 35 rushes for 142 yards, but a good stop by the Tigers, and now uh, they force a third and long. Third and 11, ball inside the left hash mark from their own 25. Eight minutes left in the first quarter to throw. Andrees to the far sideline, making the catch is Logan Green. Yep, late hit, he's out knocked of out of bounds, and a flag comes in. It was Michael Ford that applied the hit. And Green went down out of bounds, and that's where the late flag comes flying in. And the bad news is that Green was actually shy of the first down by a yard. So they would have been short of the marker, but a late hit's going to tack 15 on and give DePaul a fresh set of downs. And Joe Fincham is fired up. He's got a red sweatshirt on, but his face is red. He is hot. He wants to say that the ball couldn't have been caught it was already a, a situation, or at least somebody was in his way, and they called that uh, against him. But clearly it was a bad decision by Ford to hit the man after he'd been out of bounds. But it would have been a, a, I think, a situation I think Joe where Fitchum feels like Green was still in bounds when he was hit, and it oh, may have been. Oh, that's what he was saying. It's hard to tell from all that's the way on saying. the opposite side of the field. but He's still working the official right now. He's not a happy camper. It'll be first and ten to Paul from midfield, 7.59 to go in the first. From the shotgun, Andres, the sophomore quarterback, calls the cadence, takes the snap, face mask high, throws over the middle, right over the top, it's caught at the 35, and immediately the tackle is made. They dumped it over the top to Dax Schnaz, the tight end out of Carmel, Indiana. He's a and big boy too, I'll tell you. They slipped him in underneath, spread everybody out, and got that underneath throw and a uh, tackle for the first down, but again, you, you give this team opportunities with the penalty, and, and they'll hurt you. 14-yard gain. The DePaul Tigers with a fresh set of downs yet again. Seven and a half to go in the opening quarter. Here's a delayed handoff on the draw. It goes to Cleveland, but he's going to be stopped immediately. Terrence Crow in on the tackle. Also there to help make the stop for Wittenberg was John Harris, who was in to play at the linebacker spot. Actually, he's on the defensive line, it looks like, right now. So a loss of two, second and 12, 707 to go in the first. Three to nothing, Wittenberg with the early lead here on their home turf. Shotgun snap to Andres, here comes the pressure. He'll throw, a little comeback route at the 31, it's caught, and the receiver is immediately tackled. Logan Green out on that far side with Will Harris. And that's where Andres keeps looking to that far sideline. Andres throwing the ball a couple times here in that under belly part of the uh, Wittenberg defense right there where the inside linebackers are. They're spreading them out and finding little pockets there for nice, easy dinks and dunks. Four receivers set. High snap for Andres. Yeah. Now Nothing. has to tuck it and try to run, and he runs into the waiting arms of Trevor Good. 
the 5'11", 230-pound senior defensive end. Bear hugs Andres and wrestles him down back at the 32. So it's a loss of a few here. It's going to bring up fourth down. Loss of two will make it fourth down and five to go. 6.05 left in this opening stanza. Red Swarm defense getting ready here. A lot of fans into it, a lot of... A lot of shouting going on. It's fourth and about, as, as you said, Scott, about six. Evan Wiggum is wide to the right, one of three receivers on this near side. Andy Hunt and Will Harris joining him. Logan Green, the lone receiver out to the left. Cleveland is the tailback. But DePaul will let the play clock run all the way down, and they will take a delay a game before they punt. So they showed as if they wanted to run a play, but Bill Lynch was just hoping maybe he could draw Wittenberg off sides. That doesn't happen, so DePaul will try and pin Wittenberg deep with a punt. Again, we talk about big games, and special teams are always critical. Of course, turnovers, but now special teams become incredibly important because now DePaul will try to pin the Tigers back and, and force uh, some issues, get their defense to uh, oppose the offense inside their own 20, and we'll see uh, how this kick will be. Ty Johnson back at midfield, gets the snap, kicks it away. Sam Kayser, the return man, he'll let it go. Had some side spin on it, and it bounces inside the 10 and goes to the 5. And I believe they're going to mark it near the 4-yard line. So an excellent punt from Ty Johnson. And it forces Wittenberg to start deep in their own territory. Bill Lynch is the head coach at DePaul. He's in his sixth season this time around. He's actually... In his second stint at DePaul, coached them for one year in 2004, went on to coach at his alma mater, Butler, and then with the Indiana Hoosiers. How about that? And now back here with DePaul where he had gone 8-2 and two each of the last three seasons, but they already have three losses this year, just six games in. Difficult situation for the Tigers against this uh, defense. They'll hand it off to Tigers' will on first down and 10. And not a lot of room to work with Nick Kendall. He does fight his way to the five-yard line, a pickup of one. Yeah, he was stoned at the line of scrimmage. And, again, this uh, front four is very, very good. And leading that uh, that play was Krupe. And also in there was uh, Zach Williams and Nate Orison. Those are big-time players on that front four for this uh, DePaul Tiger team. Ashawn Miller is the nose tackle as well, part of that group. Here's a throw to the near side, almost intercepted. Kennedy was looking for Tim Pick Woodrum on a quick slant out to the left. And Connor Perkins, the junior safety, jumped the route. You're right, Coach. If he catches it, that's a defensive touchdown for DePaul. And uh, right now, Wittenberg's offense looks a little out of sorts, uh, out of sequence right now, and this is not good for them. Again, in the position that they're at, they lead 3 nothing here with five minutes to go in the first quarter, but their heels are back on their goal line, and the Paul Tiger defense is really coming after them. This will be a big play, third and about eight. Kennedy, three for six through the air so far, 41 yards. Shotgun snap to Jake. Looking to throw. Near side has Woodrum all alone at the 15. Caught it, has the first down, and he'll be banged down near the sideline. It's going to be a pickup of 15. They'll put him down at the 20, so Tim Woodrum gets his first catch of the game. That's who Kennedy was targeting on the last play. And this time, Woodrum was wide open. Well, what happened that time, they had an inside receiver that did a slant, and the, the corner and the safety both went with the slant, left Woodrum wide open, so a breakdown on that defense for DePaul in their secondary. Two receivers right, one to the left, handoff Kendall, and Nick is hit just across the line of scrimmage, spins away and picks up an extra yard out to the 23. It is a three-yard gain for Nick Kendall, averaging six yards per tote of the pigskin coming in. He's been in the end zone three times. Now realize if you get a three-yard gain, that's a ton of yardage against this team. They only give up 30 uh, nine yards a game, Scotty. So you got to feel good anytime you rush like that. This is a defense that has nine interceptions, 12 fumble recoveries, and 24 sacks. That's how good they are on defense. Wittenberg hasn't rushed it as well statistically this year as in some previous seasons, but part of it has been their success through the air has offset that running game. Handoff here on second down and seven. Kendall again right between the tackles. Fights his way out to the 26. A gain of a couple more. It'll bring up a third down and five 
3.38 to play, first quarter. It's Wittenberg three, DePaul nothing. The Tigers of Wittenberg last week won their 20th straight regular season game. A 41 to 14 blistering of Allegheny on the road. Third down and five to go, we'll say, from the 26 on their own side of midfield. Kennedy to throw, pressure coming, escapes, rolling right. He's hit again and he will be sacked. It was Sean Miller, the big nose tackle from Terre Haute, Indiana, the six foot 245 pound senior that eventually knocked Kennedy off his feet back at the 11. A big loss for the Tiger senior quarterback and it will force Wittenberg to punt. This DePaul Tiger defense, they're called the sack attack. They've got 25 sacks on the year. One of the top teams in America for that category. And again, they come in strong, they get to Jay Kennedy and now force that punt in a situation where this will give DePaul Great field position. Bryce Bailey stands three yards deep in the end zone to get the snap. Pressure coming, gets it away, a near block. Racing up and catching it down on one knee is the return man on the return. It was Logan Green. No return here at the Wittenberg 49-yard line. DePaul has excellent starting field position. 2.36 to go in the first. Wittenberg up three to nothing. Remember now, this is a DePaul team that last week they were up 12 to 6 late in the game. I led the whole game against a Denison team that ended up beating them. But again, four field goals. Their difficulty has been on offense scoring inside the red zone. They do not have a lot of touchdowns. Again, Scott, they had to go with their field goals. But this is a situation where the Tiger defense has got to step it up. Chase Andres playing in his fifth game of the season. Takes the snap to DePaul quarterback. Now being pressured. Starts to roll left. Looking downfield. Dumps it off down the sideline. Has the tailback who makes the catch. Gets inside the Wittenberg 30. And is tackled down near the 21. It was Ramon Lopez actually who escaped out into the flats. They dumped it off to him. The senior from Illinois. And that is a pickup of 27 yards. And DePaul is in business here, Coach, from the Wittenberg 22. Great vision by Andres to be able to look off uh, the corner and be able to throw a toss down the field to get that extra yardage. A tremendous play by DePaul. Four receivers, three to the right. Andres being pressured, throws over the middle. It's off the fingertips of his receiver, Harris. Falls incomplete near the goal line. Troy Jones was back there in coverage. Almost had a chance to intercept it. Also back there, Jonathan Say and, and some other linebackers, but again, they've got to get some pressure on Andres if they're gonna be able to do anything. He has been very good at getting his feet set and throwing a good ball over there. So again, Tigers have gotta pin their ears back right now and get in after the quarterback. Second down and 10 to throw. Left side on the screen, it's incomplete. Andres missing. Ramon Lopez this time, who was standing back at the 25. It'll bring up a third down and 10 with a buck 52 left in this first quarter. Jake Kennedy for Wittenberg, four of seven through the air, 56 yards so far. Andres is four of eight for 58 yards. And DePaul faced with another third down, this time a third down and 10. The DePaul Tigers are one for three so far on third downs. They're going to fix the game clock, yeah, 156 gotta, instead of 142. Some. Yep. It didn't stop on the incomplete pass right away, apparently. So it'll be third down and 10 for DePaul. Yeah, DePaul, they, as you said, they're 40% on the year in third down situations. 40% Tigers have got to put a little pressure on Andres. Receivers wide to each side. Shotgun come. snap, throwing left to the sideline, incomplete. Looking for Logan Green, but Andres had to get rid of it. Michael Ford with great coverage over on that far sideline. So it'll be fourth and 10. And Bill Lynch over on the far sideline making a couple of changes at the wide receiver spot, but they're going to they're going keep to the offense wow. on the field. And they have a very good kicker in Jake Tanner. He had four field goals last week. He had 47 as the longest. But heavy wind coming out of that south end zone, and they're, true. they would be kicking into that wind. So at least initially, Bill Lynch acts like he wants to go for it. Fourth and 10 from the Wittenberg 22. Motion man right to left. Now back to the right goes Hunt. Snap back to Andres. Pressure got coming. Him. He's going to be sacked. Back at the 31, the delayed blitz from Jonathan Say. 
the speedy linebacker from Miramar, Florida, comes racing in and drops the DePaul quarterback for a sack. Wittenberg takes over on downs. Great read by Say. He was able to come up after, like Scotty said, he waited. He was able to read it. He watched the eyes of the quarterback and was able to come strong and made the, the sack. Tremendous job by that young man for Say. That is his third sack of the year. So Wittenberg takes over first and 10 from their own 28-yard line. With 1.43 left in the first quarter. Hand off to Kayser, running left, cuts it back, spins away from a man, but all of that just to get back to the line of scrimmage for DePaul. In on the stop was Anthony Sansone, the junior defensive end out of St. Louis, Missouri. Got a little help from a couple of teammates as well. Second down and 10. Tigers having difficulty running the ball. You have to stay inside out on your blocking scheme, and right now they're they're filling the gaps up. DePaul doing a super job fighting against this strong run game of the Tigers. They come in number one in the NCAC, believe it or not, in rushing, but right now this defense is stifling. Clock rolling. We get under a minute left in the first to throw. Kennedy looking for Snodgrass. Has it across the 40-yard line, middle of the field, out to the 47. 19 yards on the pitch and catch from Kennedy to the former Kentucky Wildcat, Thad Snodgrass. And Wittenberg moves the chains here with 56 seconds to go until the break. And you say to yourself, why doesn't Wittenberg throw every time? Well, the fact that they run the ball gives them that balance. It makes DePaul have to be safe. They have to be prepared for the run, and it allows those kinds of passes underneath. Four receivers, three to the right. Jake rolling right. It's going to throw back to the near side. It's Snodgrass, but it's incomplete at the 20. Snodgrass had to try and change course to get back to the football, which was off the mark by quite a bit. It was thrown to the inside shoulder of Snodgrass, and that's a play that's designed to go to the outside shoulder and with Brooks Hepp, the senior corner on coverage, Snodgrass had to bear hug him in an attempt to get to the football. It'll be second down and 10. That time DePaul had everything covered vertically. In fact, it looked like Snodgrass thought that he was gonna have to tackle the DePaul defender because it looked like he might intercept it. So now uh, Wittenberg is second and 10. And again, you wanna set yourself up for an, an easy pass. Five for nine is Jake throwing, gonna put it in the air again. Tiffner sliding catch made middle of the field at the DePaul 29. There's the barber, Jeff Tiffner, <laughs> the senior from Kenton Ridge, was fired up during the pregame show because his alma mater's marching band was, was on the field yep. doing their pregame performance here as the marching band guests here today. So first and 10 Wittenberg, 20 seconds left to play in the quarter from the DePaul 29-yard line. Tiffner's not only a good receiver, he's all purpose. Number one, 568 yards, 94.7 yards per game on all purpose things. Kennedy to throw out of a three receiver look, rolling Ooh. right, fires, and this one is broken up. Looking for Tiffner down at the 15, knocked away by Hunter Sego, the senior from Madison, Indiana, the veteran in the, in the defensive backfield for DePaul. So two seconds showing on that first quarter clock. It'll be second down and 10, Wittenberg. Tigers you, leading three to nothing. You know, what you like about Tiffner is his ability to focus, his awareness when he's out there. You know, he makes those sliding catches. He can catch it in about any direction, and he's become the go-to guy for Kennedy. Second down and 10 from the DePaul 29. Kennedy calls for the football, fakes a handoff, now rolling left. He's going to throw it to Tiffner behind the line of scrimmage. Jeff makes the catch but has nowhere to run. He'll be dropped back at the 33. It's a loss of four yards. Some confusion on that play, and Kennedy is pointing to his own chest saying, that's my bad. There was definitely some miscommunication on the last play of the first quarter. Yeah, clearly Wittenberg was not in sync there on that offensive play. But again, this defense is coming at you from so many different angles, and they're physical, Scott. It's not a, just a defense that runs around. They hit you, and they're very physical, and that's why it's been difficult for the Wittenberg Tigers on offense to be able to do some of the stunts, some of the things they do on offense. So we will head to quarter number two here at Edwards Mauer Field in Springfield. Wittenberg holding the early three to nothing lead. 
as the Tigers try for their 21st regular season win in a row, trying to get to 7-0 this season. We'll take a timeout. This is Wittenberg Football on the Tigers Sports Network. About a big hand for Coach Lauren Riley and the Tiger Chewers. Football fans, don't forget the concession stand is open for business and stock of all types of goodies, including pretzels, nachos, hot dogs, sausage, candy, potato chips, and a complete line of refreshing beverages. Second quarter action about to get underway here in Springfield. Three to nothing. Wittenberg out in front. The red and white on the move again here. Looking at a third and 14 from the DePaul 33. Kennedy will roll right. Throws for Snodgrass and it's incomplete near sideline. It is knocked away at the last minute by Brooks Hepp. And so the senior corner gets there just in time to Knock that pass away from Snodgrass and fourth a, uh, force a fourth down. It'll be fourth and 14. Six seconds into this second quarter. Some discussion over here on the Wittenberg sideline initially trying to decide whether to go for it, kick a long field goal into the wind, or punt it, and they decide on option three. Bryce Bailey is out to punt. And I think it's similar to the, the situation DePaul was in re just recently as far as the field position. Snap back to Bailey. He'll kick it. High kick. Definitely gets caught up in the wind. Nice. It is caught by one of the Tigers near the goal line, but he goes into the end zone for a touchback. It was Jordan Berkey who ran down there and caught the punt, but did so as he crossed the goal line. So a touchback and DePaul will get the football to begin this second quarter with a first and 10 from their own 20. We said DePaul last week lost to Denison 20 to 12. They led for a majority of that game, led 12 to six, but Denison scored twice in the final two minutes to win in Greencastle. And Wabash, meanwhile, beat Ohio Wesleyan only seven to nothing. So the likes of Denison, DePaul, and Wabash all sitting right behind Wittenberg in the conference standings. DePaul is now two games back. And the Tigers trying to stay atop that group by remaining undefeated. Andrews to throw. He's going to dump it off on a screen out to the right side across the 30-yard line. Goes DeMarco Henry, and he'll be knocked down near the sideline at the 34. That's a 14-yard completion. First down for the DePaul Tigers. Good play call by Bill Lynch, former coach of the Indiana Hoosiers. And uh, DeMarco Henry, he rushes it a lot. He's a senior. He's got 76 yards rushing and a touchdown, but he gets a catch there. Andres on second and 10, hands off again, running to the left. And losing his helmet in the process was DeMarco Henry. Big hits applied by the Tiger defenders. You had Tavion Crow in there, Terrence Crow. Kyle Derringer all there, and Murray will have to, or I should say, uh, Henry will have to leave for a play because he lost his helmet. It'll be second down after a pickup of two, second down and eight from their own 36 to Paul with the football. That's called getting steamrolled by the big red offense, and, and again, uh, the big uh, red storm offense, I should say. And Andrees to now throw. Pressure. Here comes pressure, and he gets away from a would-be sacker, rolling right, and now throws it into... The ground incomplete. Andrees able to escape the grasp of John Harris for Wittenberg. It'll be third down and eight. So far, DePaul is just one for four on third downs. They brought uh, pressure off the edge. The Tigers able to force Andrees out of uh, the pocket and made him run in a smart play by Andrees to throw it to the carpet. Four receivers, three to the right, third down and eight. 14.01 to play, second quarter. Scott Leo and the coach, Jim Scobie, with you today. We are glad you're tuned in wherever you may be. Three to nothing, Wittenberg. Shotgun snap back. Andrees to throw over the middle. He'll find Andy Hunt, who runs away from one defender, gets towards the sideline, lunges towards the first down marker, but I think he's short. Needed to get to the 44. Headlinesman will mark him about a yard shy, I believe. 
and it will bring up fourth down. Actually, he's much closer. Wow, they and now they say him. first down. Great so hustle. the linesman was standing back at the 43 initially, but leaned over and put the football down at the 44. Well, that and was, so it is a first down for DePaul. And that clearly was because of Andy Hunt and his ability to, to fight for every yard there. He's uh, the top receiver, a senior, and he, he showed you why when they're in need of a pass catcher, they go to him. Four receivers set, two to each side, snap back. Andres to throw out to the right side at midfield. It is caught right at that 50-yard line, and falling forward to the 49 goes the receiver. That was Will Harris. So a gain of seven on first down. It'll bring up second and three for the DePaul Tigers. Really impressed with Andres right now. His anticipation at quarterback throwing the ball before the receiver finishes his route. He's doing a nice job right now for the DePaul Tigers. Six of 12 for 80 yards passing. They'll hand it off on second down, down and short. Rumbling forward for a first down to the Wittenberg 45. Goes the ball carrier. So that is a pickup of four yards for DeMarco Henry. Actually, that time, was it Henry? 24, it says. That's Ramon Lopez. So Lopez, the senior, picks up first down yardage. First down and 10 to Paul from the Tigers, 45. 12.45 left until half. Fumble. Here's a snap back that never gets off the ground. Andres picks it up and throws out to the near side on a slant. It's caught by Andy Hunt. And he's down to the Wittenberg 37. That's an eight-yard pickup. Good, good handle by Andres. It wasn't a fumble. It was just a bad snap. But, again, he picks it up kind of like a shortstop and gets a quick throw and makes a, makes a nice play, a good slant, and they're moving the football. Right now the defense of Wittenberg has got to try to get this offense of DePaul off kilter. They've got to slow them down a little bit because they're starting to get a nice rhythm. Here's a high snap to Andres. He corrals it, throws wow. over the middle, and he completes this one. And that is to Podgeline, the backup tight end, the sophomore from Fort Wayne, makes the catch a little bit low and behind his body, but an excellent play down at the Wittenberg 26. That is, or I should say the 21. That is a DePaul first down. So they are just outside the red zone here with 11.57 to go in the second quarter. Andrews doing a nice job, throws a dime there with pressure in his face. And here's the handoff for Lopez on first and 10. Lopez able to sidestep a man and get down to the 18. A pickup of three. Last year when these teams played, DePaul took an early three to nothing lead and then Wittenberg scored the next 52 points as wow. they forced a couple turnovers, made a special teams, a couple of big special teams plays and they rolled DePaul, 52 to six was the final. Here's a handoff to Lopez. He's going to pitch it. Coming back to the near side is the receiver, and that is Andy Hunt inside the 20, spun out of bounds, and, and now a flag comes in. Wow, another Troy late Jones play. is over to throw the ball carrier Hunt to the ground. Wow. And so it looks to be another late hit against Wittenberg. That would be the second personal foul against the Wittenberg defense in this half. Very bad timing if this is uh, going to go against the Tigers. This will put it inside the 10. And again, they're going to call it against the Tigers. And very frustrating right now because you're allowing this uh, DePaul team to get inside the 10. And they've had difficulties all year scoring touchdowns. And you're giving them a very good opportunity to do so. Last week, they had four field goals, did not score a touchdown. And again, that's part of the reason why they've struggled on offense. With the wind at their back here, 11-10 to go second quarter. The ball will be spotted at the nine. First and goal to Paul. Wittenberg leading three to nothing. Four receivers, three to the right. Snap to Andres to throw. Near side, incomplete at the goal flag. line. Here's a flag for pass interference. Michael Ford on coverage. And on the slant route, Andy Hunt went to the ground, and they'll call Ford for, for uh, pass interference. And that'll be half the distance to the goal line. So Ford, the senior corner, called for the illegal contact in the secondary. So half the distance to the goal line. It'll be first and goal from the four. Actually, it'll be from uh, the two-yard line. First and goal at the two. Tiger defense has got to be able to 
to bow their backs right now and stop this DePaul team from getting in the end zone. Shotgun snap to Andres is wide, and he does fumble it, but gets it back. The sophomore quarterback pounces on it back at the five. The pass interference call at the goal line automatically puts the ball at the two. So that's how DePaul got that close. And then the bad snap, they lose three yards. And we haven't called it a lot, but on this drive, Scott, there have been a lot of bad snaps. There's been two or three that have been soft snaps. Some went high. So something's going wrong right now. The Tigers need to try to make something happen here. High snap again. Andres has it. Second and goal from the five. Steps up. Pressure coming. Avoids the rush. Still rolling to his right. Throws to the end zone for Hunt. It's caught for a touchdown, but there's a flag down. A DePaul player lost his helmet near the line of scrimmage. And with all kinds of movement around field, you figure it's a hold or an ineligible receiver downfield. Looks like it's going to go against DePaul. And that should negate the touchdown pass. Yep. Andy Hunt was standing in the back of the end zone, and Andres ran around long enough to find him open. There was a, a black helmet knocked to the turf, too, and that player will have to leave. Yeah, it was a Sean Miller who lost his... Helmet in the middle of that play. Wow, that's a big one there. 15 yard penalty against DePaul. What do they call? Legal substitution? Illegal participation, I mean? Did they have 12 on the field? That looked like the signal, but surely they would have seen that prior to the play. The flag came near the end of the play after the quarterback had been scrambling around. Is that a loss of down, too? The officiating crew trying to sort it out. I thought he said 15 yards. Referee's microphone was See cutting out. Says. We didn't hear the the call very well. 15 yards. It is going to back the DePaul Tigers up to the 20. Miller had to leave the game after he lost his helmet. Yeah, we'd like to see what that call was again. Didn't quite get it. I figured we were going to get a holding call the way the play developed. and. Now it looks like it's second and goal from the 20. Andres was scrambling around back there, trying to find some daylight and look for an open receiver. Second and goal from 20 yards away. Andres, he's going to throw to the end zone far side, and it's a leaping catch on the he's far sideline, but he it's out of bounds. It. it is an incomplete pass as Andres went high into the air for Andy Hunt, guarded closely by Jordan Berkey, but Hunt made the catch over Berkey's helmet but could not get a foot down in the end zone. So it'll be third and goal from the 20. Great job defensively back there to get in between the throw. The, the air was behind uh, the quarterback, so it may have taken the ball. Now the Tigers have got to be very smart. Looks like there'll be a timeout. We'll see who calls it. DePaul calls a timeout before a third and goal from 20 yards away with 10-13. Remaining here in this second quarter, it is Wittenberg three and DePaul nothing as the Tigers and Tigers play for the 13th time ever. And DePaul joined this conference back in 2012. Coach Scobie, you will, I'm sure, remember the 2012 meeting, Wittenberg in the second game of the season. The conference opener, which means the first ever game DePaul played in this conference. Wittenberg blew out DePaul. Their head coach, Robbie Long, who was in, at that point, his fourth season, was fired when the team bus got back to campus after that game. How about that? Again, I am amazed at all of the historical knowledge that's uh, up in that brain of yours. It's amazing. Most of it completely useless, but there's a lot of it floating <laughs> around up there. I didn't say that. You did. But uh, it is amazing the history uh, of this Wittenberg Tiger football program. And of course, DePaul, another great program, and they're battling each other right here in an NCAC rivalry game. Third and goal from the 20 for DePaul. Andres to throw, has all kinds of time. He's got room. Now he's gonna roll right, looking downfield. He's across the line of scrimmage. He's gotta he's run, run with it, it. Yep. and he's going to be pushed out of bounds near the 16. Andres was looking to throw the ball and then realized at some point he was past the line. Thomas Scholl escorts him out of bounds after a pickup of four. Now we'll see Jake Tanner. Again, he's uh, one of the top field goal kickers in this league. Eight of nine on the year. 43 is his longest. And uh, he had four field goals last week in the loss to Denison. So here is Tanner from 33 yards away. Snap back, hold down, kick is away and it is good. 
So the DePaul Tigers will tie this game up on a 33-yard Jake Tanner field goal, 9.59 remaining here in the second quarter. It's a 3-3 ball game between Wittenberg and DePaul. Stay with us. More to come from Springfield right after this. It's Wittenberg football here on the Tigers Sports Network. left to play here in the second quarter. Wittenberg and DePaul tied at three apiece. And DePaul set to kick it away after the game-tying field goal. Sam Kayser back to return. That ball hits off Kayser's shoulder pads. It's picked up by Jeff Tifker, who races out to the near sideline at the 20, 25, and then sidesteps a man to get out of bounds near the 26-yard line. So that is where Wittenberg will set up shop on this possession. But Coach Scobie, the DePaul Tigers go down and get points to tie this game up. Jake Tanner, a 33-yarder, capping off that DePaul drive. Wittenberg's scoring drive ended with an Adam Aquista 41-yard field goal with 9.28 to go in the first quarter. So that's where we stand. The guy that's impressive on that drive was Chase Andres. The, the fact the quarterback, the sophomore, showed some great quality plays. Jaheim Washington Boy, is in as the hit. tailback, wow. and they'll hand it to Washington. Hit near the line of scrimmage, maybe picks up a yard. The junior from Palmetto Ridge High School in Naples, Florida. Washington, a short gain. Maybe they give him to the 29. Let's see. It is going to, going to be a pickup of two. Jaheim is, uh, again, Averaging about 51 yards a game. He's got his 42nd run uh, of the year. He's got three touchdowns for this Tiger team. Leads the team in rushing. Uh -oh, and Nick Kendall uh, is second. Here's Kennedy taking the snap and looking. He's going to throw left side. It's caught at the 40 by Bryce Bailey. He'll be pulled down at the 42. That's a 13-yard completion to the Columbus Academy product. Bryce Bailey, the senior. We talked to Bryce a couple of weeks ago after he scored two touchdowns. He was on the receiving end of Kennedy passes in the win here at home on homecoming, and he said that the rest of the receivers were giving him a hard time. He was the last of that group to get into the end zone you this know, he, year. He's a game breaker, Scott, and he's a guy that you love to have on your team because at any minute, every time he catches the ball, you kind of hold your breath because you know he can break one, and he uh, makes a big play there, gets the Tigers a first down. and. There are so many weapons on this Tiger offense, but those uh, those court, those uh, wide receivers are amazing. Kennedy to Bailey again, but this one is beyond his outstretched arms at the DePaul 49, throwing to the near sideline. Kennedy, you've got Kayser and Tiffner with Bailey and Duncan. That's the Wittenberg four for the receiving core that's out there at the moment, although Kayser may be lining up in the backfield again with 8.35 to go in this second quarter. DePaul has eight first downs, Wittenberg has six. Total yardage, DePaul 113, Wittenberg 99. What you like about Jake Kennedy, he's not flashy, but he's versatile. He can move the ball, uh, he can run it, he's got good skills, he sees his receivers well, and here's an option play. Yep, high snap to Jake, option play right, but now reverses field, abandoning the tailback, goes to the left and dives forward out near the 44-yard line, a pickup of two for Jake the Snake, and it will bring up a third down for this Wittenberg offense. Third down and eight 
They need to get to the DePaul 48. 8.08 to go until halftime. You'd like to see this Wittenberg Tiger offense, you know, pose their will on this defense, and right now the defense is winning. Three receivers, two to the right, H back on the right as well. Kennedy to throw, fires to the sideline for Tifter, has it as he gets to the sideline, steps out of bounds, right at the first down marker at the DePaul 48. A pickup of eight yards. That was picture perfect. Kennedy leading Tifner, who's able to get a foot down right in front of the Wittenberg bench. Jeff Tifner again, he's got 432 yards on the year coming in, 36 catches. What's so amazing about him is he leads the NCAC in touchdowns with 10 touchdowns receiving. And he, again, has been one of those guys, a go-to guy when you need that play. And the Tigers have got to continue to get the ball into the hands of the receivers. But you'd like to see him get a gash here with their offense running the ball. Wittenberg working into the wind. And it is a stiff wind here at Edwards Mauer Field. Jake Kennedy now calls a Tigers timeout before a first and 10 in DePaul territory with 7.34 showing on that second quarter clock. So Wittenberg uses a timeout. Kennedy is 9 of 16 through the air, 116 yards. Tiffner has three catches. Nobody else has more than one. But it's Duncan, Snodgrass, Woodrum, Bailey, Danke, and Kayser, who all have reception. So seven different receivers, three for Tiffner and one for the other six. Jake Kennedy spreading the wealth again today. Yeah, the, the difficulty again, though, is the rushing game, and, and it's just been very difficult against the top uh, defense against a rush uh, in the NCAC fourth in the nation. And uh, it, it's, it's just been very hard to accrue any kinds of, uh, of rushing right now net yards rushing eight for the Tigers and again you, you just are amazed at the ability of this DePaul defense to stop the run. Second quarter at Wabash eight minutes left until half Wabash nine Oberlin seven and it'll be Wabash coming here next week for week number eight of the Wittenberg season. Tigers keep it on the ground a handoff to Kendall up the middle but he will be taken down at the line of scrimmage, the DePaul 48. Second down and 10, 7-12 to play in this second quarter. Wittenberg and DePaul from the shotgun, Kennedy. Looking to the near side where Liam Duncan is the receiver. He's got two on the far side, four-man front for DePaul. Three will rush. They'll throw out to the far side. Tipner had the football at the 35, well, but hard. took a big hit and he goes down. He's down. Jeff Tipner. He is slow to get up over on the far yep, side of the field. The DePaul sideline reacting yep. to the big hit applied on Tiffner. And here yeah, comes the training staff to take a look at him. The incomplete pass will bring up a third and ten. Yeah, he got sandwiched there uh, on the play. And, again, he's, he's moving his legs, but uh, you, you hope everything's okay. Again, they tried to uh, zip the ball in there. He might have gotten the wind knocked out of him. You hope. That's all it is. But, again, the Wittenberg Tigers trying to get a first down on the play, and uh, that defense uh, came up with the hit. Kennedy trying to thread the needle over there at about the 35-yard line. Two DePaul defenders, one on each side of Tifner, and Kennedy got the ball in between the two of them. But right as Tifner got his hands on it, he took a lick. But Tifner jumps up. And he will, under his own power, not just walk to the sideline. He'll be jogging, and that is good news for the team in red and white. Yeah, he's a gamer, and he's a guy that uh, will be right back if he can. And, again, uh, he took a lick, and he's still hanging in there. And, again, he'll, he'll be back, I'm sure. But the Tigers uh, forced to throw the ball. This is a third and long, and this is what uh, every defense likes to, to have you in. And, certainly, Tigers have been able to make plays. Jake Kennedy. Again, would like to be able to maybe get that thing into Liam Duncan or Bryce uh, Bryce's hand. We'll see what happens. Wittenberg three of six on third down today. Jake calls for the football. Looking downfield, still looking. Throws over the middle for Duncan. It's going to be tipped and then intercepted. Off the hands of the receiver, Duncan, and then Brooks Hep picks it off for the DePaul Tigers. That is only the third interception thrown by Jake Kennedy this year compared to 24 touchdowns. That one came off the right hand of the receiver, Duncan, and after it did, it basically popped right into the waiting arms of Hep. and the DePaul Tigers defense gets the stop. They'll take over at their own 32-yard line 
in a 3-3 tie with 6.53 to go in the second quarter. Brooks Hepp again with that interception. That's his third of the year. Hepp uh, again a senior out of Fishers, Indiana, Bishop Chatard High School. And the ball uh, was thrown. It, it uh, was tipped by a Tiger receiver, and then Hepp was able to get the, uh, the turnover. And all of a sudden now DePaul with the football after getting a, a drive on the last offensive possession for a field goal. Chase Andres will be in the shotgun, a running back to each side. Two receivers as well, one on each side. He'll throw over the middle, incomplete. Out near midfield, he overthrows the tight end. Was trying to get that ball up the seam to a tall receiver. That was actually for DePaul Duncan West in there at a tight end spot. And... Andres overthrew him, and then West took a big hit. It'll be second down and 10. Three to three, tie game. Wittenberg trying to get to 7-0 on the year, looking for their 21st consecutive regular season win. Trying to stay atop the conference standings by themselves. DePaul just 3-3 three and three on the year, 3-2 three and two in the conference. Andres to throw. Here comes pressure, oh, pressure, and down he goes. Brandon Daniels will make the sack. Two Wittenberg Tigers converged, forced Andres up in the pocket, and then Daniels comes in to finish the job. There is a flag down near the line of scrimmage, and it's a face mask against Wittenberg. Brandon Daniels, the senior defensive end, the guy that provides the sack, but it's a 15-yard personal foul face mask against the Wittenberg defense. And so DePaul will get... An automatic first down. Boy, and that's the third penalty now that has really hurt the Tigers. We had uh, two earlier that uh, gave DePaul some big uh, big gains, gave him first downs, and now this one. And, and those three things hurt. Nine hurt first bad. downs for DePaul in the game, three of them by penalty. Tigers lead the NCAC with penalties. They have 64.7 yards a game they give up in penalties. 45 on those three you're talking about today. Yep. Here's a handoff on first and ten. Nice hit. Nothing doing here, trying to bounce it out Terrence to the left Crow side of the hit. ball carrier. It was Crow who makes the stop. It was Noah Jones who ran it. So Jones, one of the many DePaul Tigers that carries the football. Tanner Cleveland, Jake Weber, James Deaton, DeMarco Henry, Ramon Lopez. And then, of course, when they're wearing these white jerseys on the road with the yellow numbers and not much of an outline yeah, around them, see. it's hard to figure out a yes. six from an eight. I, I know I'm getting old and I can't see as well, but these guys really make my life miserable. Three receivers, two to the right. Shotgun Andres on second and ten. Throwing to the near sideline incomplete, looking for Andy Hunt. But Andres must have thought Hunt was yep, going to run a curl route. route. And so Hunt never came back to the ball, running a streak down the sideline. It is third down and 10, another big play coming for this Wittenberg defense. It's a three to three tie game, 542. Left to play in the second. And that Tiger defense, that Red Storm defense, we got the guys jumping up and down on the sidelines. They need a stop right here. Andres They're coming after Andrews. the snap, looking, looking down the left sideline, firing that ball for Michael Grace, but incomplete. Tigers had him covered up well. Michael Ford was there. Troy Jones coming over the top as well. So Grace, the senior from LaGrange, Illinois, cannot haul it in. It's fourth and 10, and DePaul will have to punt. Tigers do a great job there with some terrific defensive back defense uh, and, and good pressure on Andres, and they're going to get the football back. The wind is going to be in their face, but again, uh, they've got a pretty good receiver back there. I believe that's Kayser and uh, he's, he's going to be receiving the punt. Snap back to Ty Johnson, gets the punt away, wobbly kick. Ooh. It hits off the helmet of a player. I'm not sure which player it hit off of. Must have been off a DePaul Tiger because there was a Wittenberg Tiger and a DePaul Tiger there, and it bounced off somebody's helmet. Well, you hope DePaul it's not tried a tiger. to pick it up and run with it, and the officials will blow the play Gee, dead. Wes. That ball bounced off a helmet, and then the DePaul player picked it up and ran it into the end zone. I think everybody's kind of wanting to know who did it come off of. But it looks like it's going to be the Tigers football. A 
Illegal so touching is the call. It'll be it'll be Wittenberg ball. So it was down by DePaul at the 27. And I thought he signaled unsportsmanlike conduct, yeah, but maybe it was a, a sideline warning because I heard him say it's a warning, their yeah. first warning. So the mystery of trying to solve NCAC officiating <laughs> continues from here in the broadcast Absolutely. booth this week, Coach. No doubt about it. First and 10 from the 27. 5.27 to go in the second quarter. It'll be Wittenberg ball. Kennedy fakes the handoff and runs with it. He'll keep it behind the left tackle and get out to the 29, a gain of two for the senior quarterback. Boy, DePaul does such a great uh, job of assignment football. They don't make a lot of mental mistakes. They, they hold true to their gaps. They don't allow a, a lot of, uh, you know, decision-making. They, they're smart players, and that's what makes them so good on, on fighting this rushing offense of the Tigers. There's not a lot of room to run the ball. Running back, sidecar right, that is Kendall. They'll hand it to him on second and nine, and Nick Kendall will work his way forward near that right hash mark to the 31. A gain of a couple more, but it will be third down and six with 4.37 to go in the second quarter. Wittenberg has been limited so far to 126 yards of offense. Tigers almost got to 500 yards at Allegheny last week. The two games prior to that, they did have over 500 yards of offense. Yeah, they lead the NCAC with 464 yards of total offense per game. Third down, six to go. Jake has the football looking. He's gonna throw that bubble screen, looking for Snodgrass, but it never got to Thad. One of the Tiger offensive linemen, Noah Hobson, was somehow in the middle of that play, and it hits got, off of Snodgrass and the Tiger offensive lineman, fourth down. Yeah, he got blown up, and again, good defense uh, over there. DePaul doing a super job of coming up and making some plays. Uh, number 11, Harry Bell was in there. The outside linebacker was able to blow it up and push the, uh, the def uh, blocker right into Snodgrass, so the Tigers will have to kick it away. And, again, a great defense by these DePaul Tigers. So Bryce Bailey in punt formation, snap back to him at the oh, 16, gets it away. High kick. spiraling kick into the wind. It'll bounce at the 20, takes a DePaul hop, and then it'll be down by the Tigers near the 25. Jonathan Say thought it touched a DePaul player. He tries to, to run with it back towards the, the end zone. So. No, it is yeah. going to be Wittenberg ball. Yeah. The official says Wittenberg ball, it touched the DePaul player. Absolutely, and I, I know that some of the fans over here and some of the players saw that. Now they're going to say but they ran it Say in for a was touchdown. trying to return it into the end zone. Now the officials are going to have a conference. As soon as it happened, a couple of the Tiger players started pointing at the DePaul return man, sure. saying that the ball had been touched by a DePaul and, Tiger. And, and again, if no one touches him, and, and, and it's been received, they can run it in the end zone for a touchdown. So two weird plays a on strange punts. Play. At the other end, we had the ball that hit off of somebody's helmet, apparently <laughs> the DePaul player, but it was a 50-50 chance because you had a Wittenberg Tiger and a DePaul Tiger running side by side. On this play, Bryce Bailey absolutely booms a tremendous yep. punt yep. down to the DePaul 20-yard line. It took a DePaul bounce back towards midfield, but when it did so, it went right past one of the DePaul yeah. Tigers and apparently got a piece of him. Yeah, this is twilight zone mentality. Of course, Rod Serling went to Antioch just about 30, 15 miles away there in Yellow Springs, but certainly he's not here today. But this has been a strange couple plays, and the Tigers benefit from it because they'll get the football and they'll have it inside their own th or the uh, the uh, 26. DePaul 26 yard yeah, line. Yeah, 26 yard line, 402 left in the half. Snap flag. to Kennedy, here's a flag, handoff to Kendall running left, and he's going to be spun down. Another DePaul Tiger loses his helmet. I don't know if those guys are not Look wearing like their chin straps or what, but, Coach, that's the third time a yeah. DePaul player has lost his lid out there. Sure has, and, and again, this looks more like a, maybe a, a movement. It looks like it might go against the Tigers. We'll it see. is with 3.59 left in the first half. And it's an illegal shift against Wittenberg. So that will back them up. The ball will be placed at the 31. 
So first and 15 after the five yard penalty. Troy Clay will check into the game as a tailback. Nick Kendall comes to the near sideline. So first and 15, play clock is down to five already. Kennedy will get them lined up quickly. Takes the snap, hands to Clay up the middle, fighting for some yardage, Troy Clay. A little bit thicker build than the other Tiger rushers, and maybe that helps against that big DePaul rushing attack up front. And so Clay gets to the 26, back to the original line of scrimmage. Second down and 10, Troy Clay, the transfer from Tiffin University. The Tiffin Dragons are undefeated in Division II so far this year. That? They've got a big that? game today against Ohio Dominican. Second down and 10, 3.08 left in the half. Kennedy from the shotgun, two receivers left, one to the right. Jeff Tiffner's back in the game, by the way. Kennedy will throw up the middle, Snodgrass at the 10, Touchdown. catches it, goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Wittenberg, 26 yards away on the slant. Kennedy to Snodgrass, and Wittenberg leads 9-3 with 2.59 remaining until halftime. Smart play again, good fake option up the middle, and then he stepped back. Kennedy saw his receiver and threw a, a dart right onto his hands. Good play by Snodgrass, and that gives him seven touchdowns on the year. So the fumbled punt return, the ball that hit the DePaul Tiger on the punt, proves extremely costly for the visitors. Here's the PAT, a line drive kick from Aquista, and it's right down the middle. And make it 10-3, Wittenberg. Special teams looms large oftentimes in these games that help decide the conference title. Two very bizarre punt plays. Wittenberg dodges a bullet on one. DePaul cannot dodge the bullet at the other end, and so Wittenberg punches it in. 26 yards officially, Kennedy to Snodgrass, 10 to three Wittenberg, and that gives Joe Fincham's team a little bit of breathing room here late in the half. Tigers have got to feel good about the fact that they were able to uh, get a good drive here against the defense. It looked like they were uh, having difficulty uh, making any kind of movement up and down the field, but that time they run the ball pretty well and they get the ball uh, thrown on that slant. Snodgrass gets a 26-yard catch and they finish with an Aquista kick and they lead 10-3. to This game is going to have a big effect on the NCAC. Again, it sets the tone again for the Tiger Tigers scoring, next guys. week against Wabash, a, a team that uh, has always been a Jake nemesis Kennedy. for that this Wittenberg team, but uh, the last couple years the Tigers have kind of owned them, so we'll see what happens. But uh, it looks like uh, Quista is going to kick it. He's got the ball kind of laying on the side, and he'll kick it from the 35. He'll keep it on the ground into the wind. It's a bouncing ball on the carpet inside the 30, picked up by one of the up men who carries it out to the 35-yard line. That was DeMarco Chase, Henry on the return. Chase Smith on the tackle for the Tigers. And, again, this uh, red swarm defense has done a nice job of applying the pressure to uh, the quarterback, Chase Andrews, the sophomore for this uh, DePaul Tiger team. So it'll be first down and 10 DePaul from their own 35. It's Wittenberg 10, DePaul 3. 2.54 remaining in quarter number two. Scott Leo and the coach Jim Scobie with you today. Thanks for tuning in. Big game in the North Coast Athletic Conference. Andres hands it off. And with the carry for a couple of yards goes Noah Jones. Noah Jones. So Jones on the carry. By the way, we're still very much right in the heart of the Wittenberg football season, but... The Wittenberg basketball team held their red and white scrimmage next door earlier today. Did you get a chance to see him? I peeked in, looking to throw. Left side, it's Hunt. Catches near the sideline at the Wittenberg, I should say the DePaul 45. Tackled at the 46. Going to get Michael a first Ford down. on coverage. Terrence Crow over to help bring him down, but it is a first down completion. Wittenberg basketball team coming off a 27-3 season a year ago. Four starters back. Yeah, one of the best years I can remember uh, of watching Tiger basketball, and it was a fun team. Best you team know, since 2005 when no it went question. to the Final Four. Yeah, no Here's question. Here's a snap back and handoff as nice Andrews defense. tries to Good hand sack. it to Noah Jones, who was met in the backfield. Tavion Crow there to make the tackle. Jonathan Say right there. He's having an incredible game. And so it is a loss of... 
five yards. Second down and 15, 153 remaining in this second quarter. So speaking of the basketball players, they're walking around selling some tickets. Uh, I see Bertimus right there, and, and that he's one of those guys that you love to watch. I'm an offensive guy. I love to see guys score, and this Wittenberg team has got some shooters. they got some scorers. If you love watching basketball, you got to see the Tigers play. Four receivers set. Quick slant here for Will Harris. Makes the catch out across the 45, and tackle is made at the 49. The headlinesman was signaling first down, but he was looking at the wrong marker. <laughs> he was looking at the original first down. I've done that before. Uh, the original uh, line of scrimmage, and so it'll be third down and eight. And the headlinesman was pointing first down, moved the chains. Joe Fincham calls a timeout and was letting that official hear about it. <laughs> it'll He's be third down. And, yes, it has been. Third and eight from DePaul zone 49 with 87 seconds left in the half. By the way, we want to thank all the community that's been coming to the games. How about Wittenberg offering free tickets? It's free now to every athletic event in Wittenberg. What I noticed that once they announced idea. that, you told me that you would pay my way the rest Absolutely. of the, the rest you of know, the You know, I'm, I'm a very giving person. You Scott. are. You're a heck of a guy. And I'm telling you, Jim Engledew taught me that. And uh, Don Rinker, those two guys have been very giving. In fact, I wish Rinker would give me some of those Reds tickets. I've been wanting to go see a game for years. and he, He's got know, a stash of them, I heard. I'll tell you, he's got great seats. He can't give them it. away these days. No, though. you can't. But uh, the Kenton Ridge uh, band getting ready to come on at halftime, and, boy, did they put on a good show in pregame. Third down and eight, 130 left to uh -oh. play here in this opening half. Wait a minute, offense opening was moving half too. And, Yeah, movement up front. Let's see who the guilty party is. For Wittenberg, Tavion Crow moved, and then a couple of DePaul offensive linemen Jumped. It's going to be against Wittenberg. So it's offsides against the defense. That'll move the ball into Wittenberg territory to the Tigers 46. And so it'll be third down and three. So third and eight becomes third and three for DePaul. Andres is in the shotgun. He's got Ramon Lopez as the running back, sidecar left. Three receivers right, one to the left. Tigers four up front. Let's see if they can get to Andrews. They're going to hand it off. Lopez sneaks away from a man. He's still on his feet. First down to the Wittenberg 40. To the 35, near sideline, and then hit and pushed out of bounds and taken to the ground. Jordan Berkey and Troy Jones make the tackle, but it is a first down run, a pickup of 13. They had Jones bottled up and allowed him to escape. Boy, Ramon Lopez, what a player. should say Lopez. Jones yeah. is back in to replace him now. 5'9", 189 senior out of St. Charles, Illinois. St. Charles East, he got his, his head underneath uh, one of the arms, and once he squirmed away, that big body is a tough guy to bring down. He got some good yardage first and 10, and time is running down here. Minute 22, DePaul trying to get another score. Andrews to throw down the left sideline. Jones on coverage. It's incomplete. Looking for Ethan Hudson, the sophomore receiver. It'll be second down and 10. One eighteen to go until half. Wittenberg 10, DePaul 3. Tigers on a turnover, on a fumbled punt, a ball that bounced up and hit the DePaul return man. That's how Wittenberg cashed in the last time down to take the lead again. Wittenberg led 3 to nothing originally. Now up 10 to 3. From the shotgun, Andres, the sophomore who Took over the starting job from Cam Haynes. Here they come. Pressure coming. Andrew steps up. He's going to run to the 30, 25, 20. Cuts back in at the 15, avoids a tackle, and slides down near the 12-yard line. Nice run by Andrews, 21 yards. He shows his athleticism on that play. We've got 109 showing on the clock, and DePaul will hurry back to the line. Tigers were blitzing. They came in from the edge, and left a hole right up the middle, and he shows what kind of athleticism he has. Andrews able to run down the sidelines for first down. Shotgun snap back to Andrews. To Tigers to chasing him. He's going to throw it away. Andrews just throws it into the ground at the feet of his receiver, Jones, the tailback. It'll be second down and 10, 103 remaining here in the second quarter. Wittenberg has... Totaled 142 yards through the air, 159 in total offense. DePaul has passed it for 129. They're at 160 total yards. Andres is a very good passer, and one of the things they'll do right here inside the 20 is they'll try to get an outside receiver in it running a post. This time Second they throw it to the side. Back. They throw it to Hunt over on the far sideline outside the hash mark near the 7, 
and he'll get down near the five. Out of bounds, far side. Actually, he's still inbounds. Clock's the clock running. is running. It'll be at the six. It'll be third down and about three from the six. They could get a first down without a touchdown, but they have just 37 seconds to do so. DePaul's Achilles heel has been right in here. They've had trouble this whole year of scoring touchdowns. They were able to do it early, but can they get another touchdown? Looks like they're going to let the run... The clock run all the way back. And, I don't uh, really understand this. They have two timeouts left, 20 seconds left on the clock, and they'll let that play clock run down to four and then call the timeout. Yeah. So 19 seconds to go in the second quarter. DePaul calls a timeout before a third down and three. They're at the six. They need to get to the three to get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Let's see if the Wittenberg defense can at least hold them to a field goal here. How about Chase Andrews and his ability to uh, make the right play? He did a great job of exploiting the vacated area up the middle on that run. He was able to you know, use his speed and uh, run to the outside and get that first down that set them up for this play. But now it comes down to defense. Can you put pressure on him, and can you force this DePaul team to have to kick a field goal? That would be super important right now. Last week, again, DePaul, uh, Scotty, could not get a touchdown in that game against Denison. With a touchdown, they might have won the game. They had four field goals uh, in that game and, again, had the lead late. I think it was 12-6 to six late in the game, and then they gave up two touchdowns. So it is third down, ball on the right hash mark, just inside the six. 19 seconds showing on that. Second quarter clock. They're at halftime at Wabash. Wabash leading Oberlin 15 to seven. We'll keep you updated on other games. We'll check some other scores at half. Andres from the shotgun, four receivers, two to each side. Running back, sidecar right. Snap back to Andres. Here Pump they come. Fakes. Here comes pressure. Now he's gonna escape out to the left side. Looking into the end zone. Still nobody open. Tries to escape the Tiger tackler. Still on his feet. Throws to the back of the end zone. It's incomplete in the back left corner. Andres ran for his life and somehow avoided the sack a few times only to then throw it away and bring up fourth down. You know, he, he thought about continuing to try to make a run. Here's the problem. He could have run the clock out, and he had it down to about 7.1, and that's what's on the board right now, and finally threw the ball away. But if he continues to try to snake around back there, he could have cost his team a chance to get a field goal. Now they'll get a chance to do a little chip shot, a win behind their backs, and, of course, Tanner, one of the best kickers in the league. Yeah, this is only a 23-yarder from that right hash mark. Seven seconds to go on the clock. Out of the hold of Will Harris. Snap is back, kick is away, and it is good. So with four seconds remaining until the break, it is now Wittenberg 10 and DePaul 6. The uh, Tigers and Tigers here in this NCAC tilt. Wittenberg leading by four. So DePaul puts together a nice drive there, Coach, and they did so on a couple of big gainers on the ground. Andres extending the plays with his legs. That last play there, a good example of how he can avoid the pressure and throw on the run, although the Tigers' secondary was tremendous down there in the end zone. Nobody ever got open on that play, even though Andres had all kinds of time, or really he just bought himself all kinds of time with his scrambling. Yeah, I think Ram Ramon Lopez's run was such a big run there. Again, it looked like the Tigers were going to tackle him. He kind of got his head underneath one of the arms and spun out and was able to then use that big body of his to ramble and gamble down the sideline and get a first down, a big play by them. And it just shows you that this DePaul team has got the kind of players that uh, that can win a conference. The thing that's been their, their real Achilles heel, Scott, is they can't get the ball in the end zone and, again, that hurts them again in this situation uh, this week. Jake Tanner kicks it away. It'll be a uh, squib kick. Bounces up the field down to the 25. It is corralled there by Wittenberg's Adam McCardle, the linebacker who plays on the kick coverage team. He'll return it out to the 39 with just one second remaining. It actually shows half a second on the clock because they have the ability to show tenths of a second here at Edwards Mauer Field. So let's see what Wittenberg decides to do if they just want to take a knee and get to the locker room up 10 to six. 
Wittenberg will get got, the ball to start the second half. By got the Mr. Danke in the uh, in the in the house tonight. We're just he's watching the, his boy, and and again, a great day for football. And I got to talk to him before the game. And Wittenberg Tigers fakes the set up the play. Yeah, they fake the. Uh, the uh, victory formation like they were going to take a <laughs> knee. They hand it off it. to Snodgrass, and he runs around the left end and goes that? to the DePaul 43-yard line. Makes DePaul have to think about it. I like throwing that in there. That's good. So that's how the first half comes to an end. Wittenberg with a little trickery here. And is there a flag yeah, down? The player. players like were headed to the one. locker room. Somebody right dropped the flag. We'll see what happens. Bill Lynch, the, the DePaul head coach, Bill Lynch, is giving the officials an earful over there as he heads towards oh, the locker hot. room. He's really hot. Joe Finchin was on them early, and some jawing back and forth between the two teams as they go to the locker room. The uh, Wittenberg Athletics Department personnel telling the Tiger players to just keep on walking. And the DePaul players kind of running their mouths a little Sniping bit, so they'll keep bit. those two apart. And that is how the first half ends. 10-6, to 6, Wittenberg on top. And we've played 30 minutes of football here at Edwards Mauer Field. Halftime activities coming up. The inside Wittenberg segment and scores, stats, and more in just a moment. This is Wittenberg football on the Tigers Sports Network. Presenting the pride of King Ridge High School, it's the Marching Cougar Band. The band is under the direction of Mr. Jim Templeton and Miss Alonza Berger. Boy released this next tune in 2013. Here's the Marching Cougar Band with Light 'em Up.
Each year, the senior class of the Marching Cougar Band selects a song from one of their four years with the band. The class of 2019 has chosen from their sophomore year a tune entitled, Gone Daddy Gone. For your halftime entertainment, the Marching Cougar Band would like to slow things down just a little bit. It's a 1981 Journey hit entitled Open Arms.
The Marching Cougar Band would like to close this afternoon's Winberg Halftime Show with a spiritual. It features a select group of our own band members. Here now is Wade in the Water. It's the pride of Kentridge High School. It's the Marching Cougarman. This has been the voice of the Marching Cougar Band saying thank you for your kind attendance. Thank you to the Wittenberg Athletic Department for inviting us here this afternoon. And now enjoy the second half. Go Wittenberg Tigers! Ladies and gentlemen, you still have time to visit the concession area. A lot of goodies for you. We do ask you, as usual, to throw trash away if you have trash in the receptacles throughout the stadium. We want to keep our stadium beautiful. Beautiful. I think that hamburger kind of got me. Don't forget the Tigers at home next week also. Because they take on the Little Giants from Crawfordsville, Indiana. Wittenberg leading DePaul 10 to 6. It's halftime here at Edwards Mauer Field. Scott Leo and the coach Jim Scoby back with you. Our inside Wittenberg halftime report continues. And Coach Scoby, as we check scores of other games, halftime currently in Crawfordsville. Wabash leading Oberlin 15 
to seven. The Wabash Little Giants trying to right the ship before they come here to take on Wittenberg next Saturday. That'll be a one o'clock kickoff. Our pregame show begins at 12.45. You can, of course, listen to that game on WUSO, WUSO 89.1 FM, and live video, free live streaming audio as well. On the web at wittenbergtigers.com, you can download the TuneIn radio app and listen to the games on TuneIn. Just search for WUSO if you download that app. So that's next Saturday. Meanwhile, we're keeping a watch on uh, Denison and Ohio Wesleyan today as well. The Big Red survived at DePaul last week, 20 to 12, scoring twice late in the ball game. And uh, boy, it was a defensive struggle, as you said, Coach. DePaul managed only four field goals. They did not have a touchdown in that game. They have two field goals so far today, but DePaul's defense is good enough to keep them in the game against the better teams in this league. And uh, last week they held a Denison to uh, just six points for, what, 57 minutes and change, but Denison scored two touchdowns late. Today they're just getting the third quarter underway in Granville. It's Denison 12, Ohio Wesleyan 3. Next week is the final home game of the year for Wittenberg in the regular season at least because the Tigers will finish the campaign on the road at Ohio Wesleyan and at Worcester. But first things first, they've got to uh, figure out a way to uh, take care of business today against DePaul to make sure they're 7-0 and before next week's tilt. Yeah, and a thing I talked to you about, I know maybe it, it makes some people's eyes uh, widen up a little bit or, or at least they give me the wrong kind of glance. But uh, this DePaul team, again, like I have said, this DePaul team was created by Bill Lynch and they were created as for this year to be a phenomenal defensive team and if you can stop the run if you can have a great defense and then run the football as an offense you've got a chance you've got the right recipe to win championships the one thing that's hurt this DePaul Tiger team has been their inability to rush the football they're ninth out of ten in the NCAC in rushing offense which is very, very bad. And, of course, we talk about this all the time. They're number nine in offense, and that is, is what hurts this football team. If they had a better offense, and again, we're only at halftime, but this team uh, has already got the potential to be uh, a top-notch uh, caliber football team, but that's been their Achilles heel. You saw it in the first half. They pounded it down to inside the red zone, had a couple penalties on the last drive, but if, if they could get in the end zone, uh, they would be beneficiaries of a lot of, of winning games. Last week against Denison, they were unable to get in the end zone. It cost them. Today, twice they're down inside the red zone. They can't get in the end zone. These are critical situations if you're going to try to be a championship team. On the flip side, Wittenberg, they've got to get their running game going. Their defense has been sound. They've thrown the ball well. Uh, they did have a couple turnovers, but again, you've got to be able to get the ball in the end zone, and you've got to run the football, and that's something Wittenberg is going to work on, I'm sure, in the second half. We'll see what both teams, their coaches, Joe Fincham and Bill Lynch, two of the best coaches in the country in Division Three football, we'll see what they have uh, worked on and, and how they'll have some changes here in this second half. Jake Kennedy is only 10 for 20 throwing the ball. So he came in completing about 73% of his passes, only 50% so far today, 142 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Kennedy, one of the best in the nation in pass efficiency. So you'd like to see the Tigers, especially on their higher percentage stuff, the shorter routes, complete those passes, keep the chains moving, sustain some drives. If they could take this first drive of the half and go down and come away with a touchdown, you'd feel pretty good about well, Wittenberg would. in this second half. Yeah, no doubt about it. This has got to be a, a very uh, a fine tooled offensive team coming out here in the second half. They've got to be able to march down the field and get some points on the board, whether it be a three or if they put six or seven on the board. They've got to be able to uh, withstand the defense. They've got to find a way to get some cracks in this uh, DePaul defensive front and be able to run the football and continue to throw the football. Again, some good throws today. Tackling-wise, Matt Krupe, again, is the leader for this uh, defense. 
He comes in number five in the NCAC in tackles. Again, their sacks. They had a big sack against the Wittenberg Tigers in that first half. They have 25 sacks on the year. And, again, Wittenberg has got to find uh, find out early on if they can continue to uh, throw the football and get a running game here in this second half. Tigers lead 10-6 to six here uh, as we get ready to start uh, the second half here at Edwards Mauer Field. The Tiger fans had a chance to enjoy uh, festive activities here at halftime, and we'll see what they do here in this second half. So, Coach, we're being told that the anger from Bill Lynch as his team was going to the locker room is because there was a flag against DePaul, unsportsmanlike conduct, after the play to end the half. So it's a 15-yard penalty, which means that DePaul will have to kick off from their own 20 instead of the 35. Remember we saw a flag on the far side of the field down around the 20-yard line? One of the DePaul coaches or players was flagged for unsportsmanlike after the half had ended, so they assess it here to begin the second half on the wow. kickoff. So Wittenberg should get pretty good field position to begin this third quarter. Now, as they kick the football, remember now, there's a pretty good stiff wind coming at their back, so they'll have at least some help with the wind as they kick it from the 20, and right then the wind blows it off the uh, you know, off the field. It's, it's uh, again, going to be interesting to see how this thing continues because I'm sure that he went in at halftime, Bill Lynch, and he used every bit of that to fire his team up. So the unsportsmanlike, penalty means that Jake Tanner kicks from his own 20. They'll get a little help and have somebody hold the ball. The wind is at the backs of the DePaul Tigers to start the third quarter, so Wittenberg will have the wind at their backs in the fourth. It's a short kick. Jeff Tiffner has it go through his hands at the 25, but picks it up, finds a seam. He's across midfield. Down the near sideline to the 40, to the 35. Jeff Tiffner with a tremendous return that ball had some backspin on it, and as Tiffner tried to catch it, it fell off of his fingertips, but he scoops it up, good blocking up the field. He gets to that near side sideline and turns in a tremendous return. So the Wittenberg Tigers will start in DePaul territory as we lift the lid on this third quarter. That is about a 40-yard kickoff return for Tiffner. 568 yards of all-purpose yards by Jeff Tiffner coming into this game. He averages 94.7 all-purpose yards a game, and right there he shows you why. They'll hand it off to Troy Clay on first down. Clay running with a head of steam. The line of scrimmage, the DePaul 32, and Clay, the pride of Springfield Northeastern High School, battles his way to the 28, a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. We've only played 30 seconds in this third quarter. Wittenberg 10, DePaul 6. Wittenberg trying to win its 21st consecutive regular season game. Already the Tigers have uh, put 46 yards of rushing up and, again, make that 50 uh, against this defense. It's only been given up 39 a game. No, and it's a run. clay again. Boy, Troy Clay is fired up in this third quarter. He churns those legs and works his way inside the 25. First down Wittenberg to the DePaul 23. 14.09 to go in the third. You know, Troy Clay on his, on his runs in the first half was the only guy that looked like he had nice little spurts. He had quickness that nobody else seemed to have, and he's getting through the hole quicker. He's making good uh, cuts, and so far uh, he's been the difference here. Again, they now have 56 yards rushing against uh, uh, the fourth-ranked rushing defense in the country. They'll hand it off to Clay again, and this time just a yard maybe to the 22. Clay weighs in at about 220, so he's a little bit bulkier than the other Tiger rushers, Nick Kendall and Jaheim Washington in that 180, 190 range. They're all about five foot ten, so their height is pretty much the same, but Clay gives you... A uh, bulkier option, a guy that can run between the tackles, run more north-south, and he's done that here early on in these first few attempts. Yeah, we watched him in high school. He's a gamer. Rolling left is Kennedy on second down and 10. Back to the right side. He'll throw, and to the near sideline, it's caught at the 12 by Snodgrass, who is ridden Real out of bounds close. near the first down marker. Brooks Hep is on the stop. It is a Wittenberg first down at the 12. So Wittenberg knocking on the door, first down and 10 from the 12 with 13.06 remaining 
here in this third quarter. Snodgrass says it's a first down. Our referee said first down. Now they're not sure. And now they say first down, Wittenberg. Great job by uh, Jake to feel the pressure, and he, he understands it well. He's able to make good plays with his feet, and he's an accurate passer. Right now you're in the zone where you need to score uh, in the red zone. Tigers are number one in that in the NCAC. Now we got to – now they've Joe moved Fincher the chains. Well, on. they've moved the chains back again after twice signaling first down. So they said first down. They moved the chains. They took a second look. Same result. First down. Moved the chains. They've almost got a yard to go. Amazing. I don't understand the confusion. Yeah. Nobody understands we, the confusion. We haven't seen officiating crews bring out the chains and measure very much at all this year. It's just not happening. But then you have a situation like this where there's confusion between the referee and the linesman as to whether or not they should be moving those sticks. And this is not good for your offense because, again, it takes you out of your, your rhythm. And, and now Wittenberg's got to try to slow down and figure out things, and they need a, a one-yard so, gain. Yeah, less than a yard to go, I guess. Nice run. Third down from Touchdown. a yard away. They'll hand it to Troy Clay, and he is going to score. From 13 yards out, Troy Clay goes right up the middle and stomps his way into the end zone, his third rushing score of the year. And the junior transfer from Tiffin University gives Wittenberg a 16-6 lead with 12.35 left to play here in the third quarter. The Tiger offense wins the battle up front, opens a big hole, and he rushes through for the touchdown. Tremendous job by the Tiger red offense. So here is Adam Aquista to kick the PAT. Snap back to Bailey. The hold is down. I should say uh, Michael Ford on the hold. And the kick is good. Make it 17 to 6. Wittenberg opens it up a bit. Scoring late in the first half and now early in the second half. A Wittenberg offense that comes in putting up 47 points per game. And boy, you. You don't want to think a game like this is over this early in the third quarter, but I will say it's going to be very difficult for DePaul with their struggles, their inability to finish drives and get touchdowns. Now they need a couple of touchdowns if they're going to win this game. No question about it. Joe Fincham's got to know that, and this is why a field position is going to be important the rest of the game. Tigers want to flip the field, keep the ball deep into the DePaul zone. And, again, how about the running attack? by the Tigers to come out here in this second half. A defense rushing group that has not allowed any yards but 39 a game, and all of a sudden the Tigers have 70. And how about the 14-yard run by Troy Clay? He probably had about 35 of, of them himself. I'll see what he's got on the day. Yeah, Clay now with 29 yards rushing, five carries. Tremendous job by that young man. Kick from Aquista will be a squib up the Better middle of the field. Nobody picks it up for DePaul until it finally bounces down around the 26. And that is where it is pounced on by Logan Green. So DePaul will be first and 10 from their own 26-yard line with 12.34 remaining in this third quarter. For what it's worth, the DePaul Tiger offense, after losing Matt Labus to an ACL injury, second straight year that they've lost him to an injury, his career is now over, the senior. Chase Andrews takes over now after Cam Haynes had filled that spot initially. He got to go back three weeks ago, or I guess it was two weeks ago, where they scored 28 and beat Oberlin. They'll need to put up some points here today. They'll dump it off on first down and 10 to Duncan West, and West is corralled at the 32, a gain of six. And again, you, you've got to think Bill Lynch. He's been in situations like this before, having coached again at, uh, at Indiana and at Butler. He's a guy that knows the, the, uh, the game, and uh, certainly he knows that they can get a good drive here, get a touchdown there back in it. Second down and five, they'll say. Andres wants to throw deep down the right side. He's got a man, but it's incomplete. Andy Hunt made the catch but went out of bounds with Michael Ford chasing him. It'll be third down and five. DePaul lost their season opener to Central of Iowa, 16 to 10. They beat Hiram in week two, but then dropped a game at Worcester in week three, 24-21. Beat Ohio Wesleyan and Oberlin before the loss to Denison last week. They need at least 18 points to win today. They've 
failed on a couple of occasions to reach 18 this year, and they've been held to six, a pair of field goals in this game. And again, you, you ask your question about Worcester. How could that happen? Worcester has a very good defense also. Shotgun snap back, face mask high to Andrees, throwing right side incomplete towards the sideline for Evan Wiggum. It'll be fourth and five, and here comes the punting team for DePaul. And how good is this for the defense to get a quick uh, a change and be able to get off the field, rest a little bit, allow your offense uh, to go to work. Again, nice job by the Tiger uh, Red Storm defense, and now we'll see what the Tigers can do. Again, the kicker will have the wind beneath uh, behind his back, and we'll see how the Tigers do. But uh, right now, Wittenberg playing extremely well. A very good start to the second half. Snap back to Johnson, who kicks it away. Wow, High kick. spiraling kick with the wind at his back, as you said. Sam Kayser calls for the fair catch and takes it at the 27. So it'll be Wittenberg ball right there. A 37-yard punt for the kicker, Johnson. He had a 65-yarder. That's his longest. He averages about 34.4 a game, but he's, he's kicked it pretty well today. So it'll be Wittenberg ball from their own 28, now leading 17-6 here at home against the DePaul Tigers, game number seven of the season. And from the shotgun, Kennedy has Clay to his right in the backfield. Two receivers right, one to the left. Noah Danke goes in motion. They'll hand it to Clay around the left end, out across the 30 to the 34-yard line goes Troy Clay. Boy, he's been a nice change of pace. The 5'10", 220-pound junior. 14-yard touchdown run to cap off the last Wittenberg drive. The sun is shining here in Clark County, Ohio, and Wittenberg's hoping that they can fire this offense up now in half number two. They did it last week. They had just 10 points at halftime, went into the locker room, talked about it, came out and scored 31 and answered at Allegheny. Handoff Clay again, running left to the 35, a pickup of... A yard for Clay, still needs to get to the 33 to move the chains. Yeah, I like the way Troy Clay runs the football. He runs, uh, you know, north. He stays uh, pretty much strong with his feet. He's able to make the ball, uh, take it across, uh, you know, the line. He's a guy that I think that we're going to see more of because he's only a junior. I think he's going to get stronger. I think the Tigers need someone like Troy Clay to step it up. They've got two really good runners in Nick and Jaheim, but this guy could really help them. Two receivers out to the right. Nice Handoff Clay on third and three. Has the first down. Gets through the line, spins, and goes down at the 40. It's a four-yard run, and Wittenberg does keep it on the ground against one of the best defenses against the rush in the country, and they're able to move those chains. That's a very good sign for Joe Fincham's squad. Yeah, Jaheim Washington comes in for Troy, and again, great running by this guy. He's having a great second half, and now uh, for him, let me see what Troy's got. He's got eight rushes for 41 yards. Tiffner, the motion man. Jaheim Washington in as the tailback. Kennedy fakes the handoff to Washington, keeps it, tries to lunge back to the line of scrimmage, Takes a hit right at the 40, but the Tiger quarterback jumps up. He's okay. Well, DePaul defense said that's enough of this. We're, we're not going to allow this, and they came in pretty strong. That front four is really a, a tough one, maybe the best front four in the league, and, and they've proven it. And we'll see if uh, the Tigers will keep pounding away, and that's what happened last week. Dennison kept pounding it. And finally, in the latter part of the fourth quarter, they were able to get some big cracks and got two touchdowns. Three receivers right, one to the left for Kennedy, who lines them up and calls for the football. Jake to throw on second down and 10, middle of the field for Snodgrass, off his hands and incomplete at the DePaul 44. Hunter Sego on coverage in that zone defense DePaul was playing. They tried to sneak it into Snodgrass, but now it's third down and long. They had a zone going on. DePaul was smart. They went to a zone. And uh, Woodrum over here on this sideline had a slant wide open. He'd have picked up the first down, but uh, Jake did not seem. So we'll see what happens on this play, third and long. Third and 10 from their own 40-yard line. Wittenberg, the football, moving left to right towards the south end zone here at Edwards-Mauer Field. 
Shotgun snap to number six. He'll throw, and this one is batted up in the air and intercepted at the line of scrimmage. Knocked up in the air by Matt Krupe, and Krupe catches his own deflection and gets pushed out of bounds on the far sideline at the Wittenberg 34-yard line. Second interception of the day thrown by Jake Kennedy after throwing just two in the first six games combined. Matt Krupe with his first interception of the year, and that's why he's one of the best defenders in the league. He's fifth in the NCAC in tackles, and that's just what DePaul needed down 17-6. to six. They needed a big play, another turnover, and DePaul now in a good position to get back in this game. So from the shotgun for DePaul is sophomore quarterback Chase Andres. He's going to throw the screen pass out to the right side. Caught near the 30. Down the sideline goes the DePaul receiver. Pushed out of bounds near the 23. That was Will Harris. First down to Paul. It's a gain of 10 yards. Yeah, just a quick out. And uh, he was able to tiptoe the sidelines right in front of the DePaul bench and able to get a first down. And all of a sudden, DePaul starting to feel pretty good. It, it's amazing how a game, the momentum can change, Scotty. And right now, DePaul with a chance to get back in this thing. It looked like Wittenberg was going to kind of run away with it, but not now. DePaul's starting to knock on the door. Two running backs, one to each side. Andres to throw. Pressured, rolls right, throws incomplete. The closest player to where he threw the ball was actually Wittenberg's Terrence Crow, the linebacker, but it was... Away from Crow, it fell to the turf at the Tigers' 20-yard line. It'll be second down and 10. Line of scrimmage at the, t the Wittenberg 23. Got Midway through this third quarter, Coach. Yeah, got to hand it to the Red Swarm defense. Their secondary that time did a super job of blanketing the receivers, and that's what's important right now with Andres down here throwing the football. You've got to be able to, to blanket the receivers and put pressure on him. Three receivers left, one to the right. Andres to throw down the near sideline, incomplete, looking for Harris. But it's incomplete near the end zone. Harris turned inside. The pass went to the outside, make it third down and 10 for DePaul. Trevor Good back into the game. He's one of those guys that can put pressure on the quarterback, and you'd really like to see that front four come after him this time. And the last couple times, Andres has got the ability to run it too, and he had, if you remember in that uh, first half, he had that nice run right up the middle. Third down and 10 from the shotgun. Andres running back to his right, gets the snap waist high. Here comes the pressure, he'll throw it on the yeah. screen Great pass tackle. out to the right side for the tailback. Nice open field tackle made. Michael Ford, Jonathan Say there as well. And the running back on the catch, tackled at the 21, that was James Deaton. From Cincinnati, Hills Christian Academy down in the Queen City. A gain of just a couple, fourth down and eight from the 21, and the field goal unit is on. Yep, nice. Jake Tanner, this will be, Coach, it'll be a 38-yarder from that right hash mark. Yeah, his, he, his longest is a 43-yarder this year. Wind at his back, although it's a bit of a crosswind now. The kick is away by Tanner, and it is good. He knocks it home to make it a 17-9 game. So the field goal parade continues for DePaul. They had four field goals last week. They have three today. They have not scored a touchdown in either one of those games. And with 8-11 to go, the Wittenberg lead is eight. We're in the third quarter. The team in red and white, the Tigers 17. The Tigers in black and gold nine as Wittenberg tries to get to 7-0 on the season, 6-0 in the conference. And we talked about how uh, the weather could be an issue. We were getting into that 302 weather, which they talked about po potential rain, a lot of wind, and we're seeing that the, the wind right now. I haven't seen much rain, but again, the Tigers with the lead right now, 17 to 9. You got a feeling you, you'd like to see them get a touchdown, put some points on the board, maybe make it a two possession game uh, would really help. Wittenberg's last possession on the score, their last scoring drive, was set up by a kickoff return by Jeff Tiffner. The possession after that, their most recent drive, ended with an interception, and that's how DePaul gets a field goal. So let's see what kind of starting position Joe Fincham's team can get this time as Tanner kicks it away from the 35-yard line, high end over in kick, up to catch it at his own 12 as Tiffner, out to the 20, and knocked off his feet across the 25. Down he goes near the 30. 
So Wittenberg's starting position here, first and 10 from their own 30-yard line. 8.06 to go. We're in the third quarter. Wittenberg has totaled 232 yards of offense. DePaul, 185. 38-yard field goal from Jake Tanner. His third field goal of the day. Pulling DePaul a little closer. Adam Aquista has a 41-yard field goal under his belt today. That was in the first quarter. In the second, Jake Kennedy hit Thad Snodgrass from 26 yards away after a Muffed punt, the DePaul Tigers had a punt bounce up and hit one of their return men. Kennedy gets the snap, throws, dumps it off for the tight end, Danke at the 38. He'll make the catch and go down close to the 40. This is near a first down. It looks like he's just short, second down and one on the completion to Danke. Second time they've gone to Danke in the game. He's a guy that you really want to look at because of the ability of your wide receivers to take good DBs and corners they're locking in on them, and you might have an opening down the seams here with your, with your big tight end or your fullback. 7.35 left in the third quarter. An important possession here for Wittenberg. It's just a one-score game as it stands right now. Kennedy calls for the football, has it, hands off. This is Clay, just needs a yard. Grabbed near the line of scrimmage, but keeps those legs churning and I does have the it. first down across the 40. It is a first down run for Troy Clay, and Wittenberg has a fresh... Set of downs here halfway through the third quarter. Move the chains for the red and white. And again, this is a, an offensive line that really is, is, is developing, getting stronger in every game. And of course, you've got to like the fact that we've been able to run the football in this second half up to 82 yards rushing. And certainly we're the top rushing team in the NCAC. And we like to see this thing continue. We average 161.5 a game. Handoff. Clay bouncing it out to the right side. Gets across the 40. Is undercut there by Dylan Hyatt, the sophomore corner from Brazil, Indiana. Pickup of two yards to the 42. Second down and eight. 6.36 to go in the third. Wittenberg today. Has seen Jake Kennedy complete 12 of 24 passes for 159 yards, one touchdown, two picks. Chase Andrews is 15 of 32, 154 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Kennedy calling for the football. Two receivers left, one to the right. Snap back to him, fakes the handoff. Jake looking downfield, throws over the middle. It's tipped Whoa. and incomplete. Matt Krupe, who tipped one and picked it off on the last possession, almost got another. It'll be third down and eight. Yeah, Krupe would be the MVP for this defense so far this year. He averages uh, uh, about five to six tackles a game, and, of course, he's gotten that interception earlier, got his hand on this one, and certainly he's a guy you got to be aware of if you're Jake Kennedy because he's always around the football. He's spotting him right now. Wittenberg on third downs today, just five of ten. They're facing a third and eight here. Snodgrass, the receiver, wide to the right. To the left side, Bailey, Tiffner's out there. It'll be Kayser as the fourth receiver. They'll throw it over the middle to Kayser. Behind him, Sam makes the catch. A flag comes in into DePaul territory. Here's another flag from the far side. Sam Kayser jets into DePaul territory. He's knocked down inside the 40, down near the DePaul Tigers 37. You almost look and see if they, they call a pick play on that. Uh, sometimes uh, the, the officials will see that. They're trying to run that bubble screen, and it looked like there may have been a pick play or a push in the back. A little waggle screen across the line of scrimmage. Uh, Kayser was only about two yards up the field when he caught that ball going across the field, and Snodgrass is saying it's against DePaul. Wow, that'd be great. Holding against Wittenberg. So maybe we have two flags. No? Snodgrass thought it was pass interference on the defense, but that's the what he was signaling. But the only call we get from the referee is the flag against the offense. So there's another flag on the other side of the field at the DePaul 49. There were two separate flags that came from two different sides of the field, but... Well, I'll tell you what, it's been a yeah, tough... Yeah, so we do have offsetting penalties because they put it back yeah, at the line of scrimmage. It's been a tough day for the Zebras today. I'll tell you, they have 
Did you see a, a signal on pass I interference? I didn't see it. The only one I saw was from Thad Snodgrass. Thank yeah. goodness he's helping us out. Well, the good thing is we get to run the play over and, and see what happens here. Third down and nine from their own 42. Wittenberg with the football. 5.45 and counting here in the third. Scott Leo and the coach Jim Scobie with you at Edwards Mauer Field. Eighth ranked Wittenberg trying to stay unbeaten. Kennedy to throw to the near side. Jump Catch. ball. Bailey got it near got midfield. It. Holds on right at the midfield stripe. Let's see if it's enough for a first down. They're going to put the short. nose of the football right at the 50. The marker, you're right, coach, is just past the Inches. 50. So they're very close. And I'll tell you but, what, yeah, our referee's already signaling fourth down. You're talking about fourth down and in inches here. Yep. You, you wonder if you, you run the ball, Joe Fincham is not going to play around. He's going to punt it away. You'd like to see uh, maybe Kennedy with the quarterback sneak or something. Kennedy looks like he's hurt. He's coming off the side there, and he's holding his hand. Yeah, he may have hand. taken a hit as he yeah, threw that ball. Something's wrong because he's holding on to his, his right hand. Bryce Bailey on to punt it, gets the snap, kicks it away. It'll be caught by the Fumble. charging Andy Hunt. He fumbled the ball. It's loose down to the 15. I think Wittenberg may have bounced on it. Yep. The ball loose inside the 15. It's Wittenberg ball. Sure is. The second fumbled punt by DePaul today. The first one bounced up and hit the return man. This one, as Andy Hunt's trying to get extra yardage at the end of the return, a Wittenberg Tiger knocks it free. And the Wittenberg Tiger special teams coming up big today. They'll have it inside the red zone with 440 to play in the third quarter. Wittenberg leading 17 to nine. Yeah, it's been all special teams and a lot of people may have questioned the fact that Wittenberg didn't try to run it against the number one NCAC rushing defense, but great play call, special teams again. They get a nice hit, ball fumbles out there, and Wittenberg gets the football inside the 15-yard line, so first and 10 for the Tigers. Hopefully Jake Kennedy's okay. He does go back out there with the offense, but you're right, he was holding his arm as he came off the field last time. Empty backfield. They'll take the snap. They hand it to Tiffner. They're going to throw He's it back open. to Kennedy on the left side. He's score. They'll catch it down the sideline. Jake Kennedy, oh, oh. touchdown, Wittenberg. The Philly special. They throw it back to the quarterback. Philadelphia oh. Eagles in the Super Bowl style. Jeff Tiffner throws the touchdown pass to Jake Kennedy, and it's 23-9, Wittenberg, with 429 left in the third quarter. Jake Kennedy's not hurt. He's 100%. He has a touchdown reception here today. I love Jeff Tiffner. He comes over to his crown and does the little muscle package. Looking at him, he is so psyched. He's finally thrown a touchdown. He does everything. We've talked about all-purpose yards. Now he throws a touchdown for the Tigers. Here's the PAT from Adam Aquista. It's good. 24 to <laughs> nine, Wittenberg. <laughs> Jeff Tiffner, something. the no. barber. I'm throws the touchdown you. pass, and Wittenberg's lead <laughs> is now 15. That is funny. He just went over to uh, his quarterback and gave him a, a high five, and this offense is, is roaring right now. The Tigers with the lead 24-9 with 4.29 to go here in the third quarter. Dave Jablonski of the Dayton Daily News and Springfield News Sun told us before the game he is – Scheduled this week to do a story about Jeff Tiffner from the Tiffner Barber Shop where he cuts the hair of his quarterback and receivers and offensive linemen. So maybe Jablonski will get a, uh, a free buzz cut while he's over there. Wouldn't that be fun? And again, there's so many good stories on this Wittenberg football team. And you, you just got to love these guys. You got to love uh, everything they do. It's a band of brothers and they, uh, they're having a great day today. Kick is away by Aquista up inside the 20. Andy Hunt grabs it on the return. Hunt fumbled the last one. This time holds on, but is speared to the ground at the 33. And some pushing and shoving at the end of this play. Maybe some frustration from the DePaul Tigers because all of a sudden they're down 24 to 9. And unless they can find a way to score touchdowns, it's going to be awfully tough for Bill Lynch's team to rally back. How about Jake Kennedy now? This is a guy that is, has just had a tremendous, tremendous uh, season, and, and now he actually gets a catch. He's thrown the ball for 25 touchdowns on the year, leads the NCAC, and another one of those records uh, 
that, that he's going after, but uh, he gets to catch one this time. Andre's going to throw the screen out to the right side where it's caught, and that is Ramon Lopez on the catch. He's out to the 34-yard line, a gain of one. Good Clock is about to go under four minutes left in the third. Good open field tackle by Jonathan Say, again one of the inside linebackers for the Tigers. Boy, Terrence Crow and Jonathan Say have had great games, of course the best two tacklers on this football team. They'll fake the handoff. Andres looking to throw downfield, but he's chased, throws to the far sideline incomplete for Wittenberg. The guy that was in pursuit was John Harris. He's had a nice day yes, getting some, some reps with the first team, chasing that quarterback around Harris. Able to pressure Andres and force the pass to the sideline that falls to the ground. It'll be third down and eight. The ball is at the 35. And you sense right here that for DePaul, things are starting to unravel a bit now because of a couple of special teams miscues. Let's see if Wittenberg's defense can throw another big punch. to throw right side, Andres incomplete. Far sideline was looking for Logan Green. So now here's a three and out, just what... The Wittenberg defense wanted. They're going to get the football back into the hands of Jake Kennedy and company up by 15. Yeah, it's amazing how your defense can make a difference like that and suddenly, suddenly put some fear into an offense, and that's what this defense has been able to do. Great effort by the defense, and again, a three and out, which really helps to uh, promote your, uh, your offense. Great anticipation by the defense. Ty Johnson, the punter, gets Another the snap, boots it away. It's a great kick. Back is Nick Kendall, and he'll catch it at his own 17 and be tackled immediately. With the wind to his back, Johnson booms that one. The tackle made by DePaul's Michael Grace. And the Wittenberg offense goes to work with 335 remaining. In quarter number three, Wittenberg 24, DePaul 9. Wittenberg Tigers looking for their 21st straight regular season win. Trying to get to 7-0 on the year, 6-0 in the conference. You know who is coming here next week, Wabash. They are going to be 6-1 when they show up, it looks like. Wabash leading Oberlin 25-7 as they go to the fourth quarter in Crawfordsville. Tigers will hand it off. Troy Clay up the middle and maybe gets a yard. Come on, give him a flag. Somebody got thrown down at the end of this play. The Tiger... Senior center. Tommy Gerhard. Tommy Gerhard, yeah, he got thrown down yeah. after the whistle. No and flag. The Wittenberg crowd wanted, wanted a flag for it. You know, Scott, the key right now for Wittenberg, and I know you, you, you always, we always look at the scoreboard, we start to look at other scores, but what the, the red and white has to do right now is ball security. It's so important, no matter what happens, we've talked about turnovers, you've got to hold on to the football You've got to advance it, but you can't have any slip-ups. Here's nice Kennedy there. to Danke. The tight end has it and rumbles for a first down across the 30. Yes. 35, the DePaul <laughs> defense ripping at the football, and Noah Danke wouldn't give it up. Danke. The senior from Massillon with a great catch and run. That's a Massillon play right there. That's tough football is what that is, and he's got three on those for the day, and that's that's a, a little wrinkle that we haven't seen a whole lot from this offense, and you got to like the fact that that now Jake Kennedy has another outlet. He can go to his big tight end or he can go to his fullback, Noah Danke. Tremendous play. Move the chains, first and ten. Two receivers left, one to the right. And DePaul three up on the defensive line. They're coming. They'll snap it. Kennedy looking downfield. Fires for Snodgrass at the DePaul 43. Ooh, Doesn't make the catch and took a hit. He Snodgrass right up. jumps up, though, and he'll stay in the ball game. It looked like he maybe got hit in the side of the helmet, but... Thad is up quickly. There is a flag yes, down about is. five yards deep past the line of scrimmage. An eligible man downfield against Wittenberg. wonder who that could have been. Snodgrass is going to come out. It looked like he, he took a pretty good hit there coming into the game for Wittenberg. It looks like that's going to be uh, Liam Duncan. Duncan is in, and Tim Woodrum is on the far side. It looks like Sam Kayser will come in to – to the game and replace Jeff Tiffner. First and 15 now for Joe Fincham's Tigers from their own 35. Wittenberg 24, DePaul 9. Wittenberg 6-0 on the year and trying to add another one to the win column. Kennedy from the shotgun. 
In motion is Kayser. They'll fake the handoff to him. Throw to Woodrum on the inside route. Makes the catch. Stays on his feet. Out across the 45. Tim Woodrum to the 48. Nice catch and run by Tim Woodrum, keeping his balance and getting extra yards. And I like his juice. I like what you just said, that yak yardage, that yards after the catch. And how about Woodrum with a nice little spurt there. And, boy, you like to see some of that juice. Let's get that thing moving. And you saw what he had. I've liked it from Troy Clay today, and I like it from him. So Wittenberg with a second down and two coming up after the pickup of 13. 141 to play in the third. Two receivers right, one to the left. Kennedy, a little play action, looking downfield. He wants Woodrum on the deep ball. Man-on-man -man coverage, and it's through the hands of Woodrum at the five, incomplete. Tim Woodrum able to get past the defender by half a step, but can't make the play. He had him, and again, uh, the, the ball just uh, might have just gone through his hands. But again, a, a nice play. The fact that you went after it and you uh, were able to stretch this defense is, is very important. Now you got a short yardage play. Those are great calls on second down, whether you get them or not. It forces the defense to be stretched and, and gives you some freedom on the next play. Wittenberg up to 303 yards of offense for the afternoon. Third down and two from their own 48. Three receiver look. Kennedy looking right. Throws to, towards nice the sidelines. It's Tifner with a diving catch. Jumps up, signals first down. Jeff Tifner makes the reception, beating the safety Connor Perkins on the out route. It's a pickup of seven yards, and Wittenberg keeps the drive alive. Boy, he's a go-to guy, and he's a guy that it seems like when Jake Kennedy is in a bind, when he's in a corner, he looks for Tifner. That time Tifner came up with it. Did you see him pop up like that? That fires this crowd up. First and 10, Wittenberg at the DePaul 45, 108 to go in the third. 24 to nine, Wittenberg trying to march to a win at home. Kennedy. Looking left, going to throw that underneath screen for Tiffner. It's broken up. Bailey missed on the block. Bryce Bailey trying to block out on the edge, but the defender got around to the inside shoulder and actually got a hand on the football. Yeah, that's the second and knocked time. knocked it away. Yeah, that was uh, Dylan Hyatt. That's the second time I thought there might have been a pick six. Saw that play coming. Hyatt did and knocked it away. Second down and ten. Bailey and Tiffner again wide to the left. Snodgrass and Kayser to the right. They'll snap it to Jake. He's going to throw to Tiffner over on the far side, outside the hash mark. Caught it at the 38, goes down at the 37. Eight-yard pickup. Little, little dink and dunk there to Tiffner to pick up about seven. And now it's a third and short yardage. And you've got to think you're in a situation now where it might be four down territory for the Tigers. We'll see. Second down, or I should say third down. and Yeah, you're right. Third and three, they would probably punt on fourth down because Joe Fincham has played it conservative again here today. But if you can pick this up, it, it's all a moot point. Wittenberg is just 6 of 14 on third down this afternoon. Kennedy fakes a handoff, throws over the top for Clay. He's all alone. Troy Clay makes the catch. Down the far sideline to the 10, to the 5, and he'll be... Pulled down near the three-yard line. 35 yards. They fake the handoff and dump it over the top to the junior tailback, Troy Clay. First and goal, Wittenberg, with 13 seconds left in the quarter. Boy, they fooled DePaul on that play because they had put everybody up front looking for a run to gain three yards. And how about that? They fooled them with a Troy Clay catch, and all of a sudden the Tigers are inside the red zone, first and goal. They'll mark it at the three-yard line on that left hash mark. This will be the final play of the third quarter, so Wittenberg will let time expire. They'll head towards the north end zone to run the next play on a first and goal. So three quarters in the books here in Springfield, and eighth-ranked Wittenberg is opening it up a bit. They lead DePaul 24-9. to This is Wittenberg football on the Tigers Sports Network.
Wittenberg 24, DePaul 9 as we go to the fourth quarter. Tigers last year thumped DePaul 52 to six over in Greencastle, scoring 52 unanswered points after trailing three to nothing early. It hasn't been that dominant today, but Coach Scobie here in the second half, Wittenberg starting to have their way. They're looking at a first down and goal from the three yard line, ball on the left hash mark. Kennedy has Jaheim Washington as the tailback to his right. Troy Clay is the H-back stationed off to the left. Right side receivers, Bailey and Snodgrass, four across the defensive front for DePaul. Kennedy with wristbands, bright red ones on each arm, looks to the sideline, gets the play. Takes the snap, rolls right, throws to Washington in the flats, and he is going to score. Jaheim Washington, a receiving touchdown, caught it at the two, turned and dove into the end zone. Just four seconds into the fourth quarter, it's now Wittenberg 30 and DePaul 9. Nice play call. Jay Kennedy rolls out. He, they allowed uh, the linebacker to come after him, got in his face, but he knew once the linebacker released, he was able to have an easy shot over the top, and then Jaheim puts his head down and finishes in the end zone. Here comes the PAT from Aquista. It's up, and the lefty kicker boots it through. 31 to 9. Wittenberg now opening it up, a 22 point lead here at home. And if the Tigers can finish the job here today, they will go to 7 0 with Wabash coming next week. And Coach Scobie, it has not been the last few years the type of Wabash teams we're accustomed to seeing, yet they've managed to stay in the conference mix each and every year. And if they win today, they'll be 6-1, and one, even though they have struggled at times. They just beat Ohio Wesleyan 7 to nothing last week. They were throttled by Denison a couple of weeks back. But you know when Wittenberg and Wabash get together, you're in for a dogfight, and so that's what's on tap next Saturday. Yeah, I think whenever they play, you throw the records out, you throw the stats out, you know it's going to be a good old-fashioned uh, hometown fight here in Springfield, and uh, certainly... It's a Wabash team that owes the Wittenberg Tigers a, a, a few swings after getting beat last year when they thought they'd have everything going their way at home and Wittenberg went over there and beat them. So Wittenberg right now sitting pretty well, and I, I think Joe Fincham will tell you they haven't played their best ball game yet. Kick is away from Aquista. Here's the return from Andy Hunt. He gets free out towards the left sideline to the 35-40 and is taken down to the 42. So that is where DePaul will play on first down and 10. They'll actually mark him at the 43. So first and 10 for the DePaul Tigers. The scoring drive for Wittenberg ends with a four-yard pass from Kennedy to Washington. And so it's a day now where Wittenberg has put up 31 points. They've totaled. 355 yards of offense to 187 for DePaul. Quick pass to the Good near play. side for Hunt behind the line of scrimmage, and he will be thrown down by Jordan Berkey. It's a loss of two on the completion to Hunt. Make it second down and 12, 14-33 remaining in the game. You know, the thing you like about Jordan Berkey, he's only a sophomore. He's out of St. Charles Prep. I know you love that school, but that's a, a kid that, is one of the developing youngsters of this Wittenberg team, and you like seeing him getting better every week. Four receivers set, and Andres is gonna be pressured, throws on the bubble screen to the left side for Hunt. To the 45, he's into Wittenberg territory, to the Tigers 45, and then spun down near the 41. That's a pickup of 16 yards. It's a first down for DePaul. Big number tr 97, Trevor Good had his helmet come off. He's gotta come out of the game, and all of a sudden, DePaul gets a nice play. They run that bubble screen and get a first down. So a fresh set of downs for Chase Andres, the sophomore quarterback from Pittsburgh, Indiana. High snap. He'll hand it off and up the middle for a few yards for DePaul. Goes the tailback. And this time it's Tanner Cleveland who's back in there, the junior, averaging four yards per carry coming into play today. A very balanced rushing attack, Cleveland. Lopez, Jones, Henry all getting carries. We've seen James Deaton rush it as well. Second down now from the Wittenberg 37, a gain of four on that run. 
So it's second down and six. Shotgun formation. They'll send a receiver in motion. That's Hudson and then hand off. Cleveland up the middle to the 35. And he's down to the 34, but shy of the first down. Third and three now for the DePaul Tigers. Tiger by Nasir Carter, the defensive end for the Wittenberg Tigers in the game. A Wittenberg win would be their 10th in 13 tries head-to-head -head against DePaul, but since 2012 when DePaul joined the conference, the DePaul Tigers have just one win to throw. Andres now has to run with it. Needed to get He's to the 31. They grab him shy and throw him backwards. Cam Cottle, the sophomore defensive end, wrapped up the quarterback and stopped his forward progress a yard shy of the marker. They'll put him at the 32. It is fourth and one, and if you're DePaul, you almost have to go for it here, down by 22 points with 12-15 left to play in this game. So they will keep the offense on the field. Three receivers right, one to the left. Shotgun formation for Andres. The tailback is Cleveland to his right. It is a quarterback draw, has room to the 25. First down, he's down to the 22. It's a run of 11 yards for the DePaul quarterback. So a fresh set of downs for DePaul with 11.53 to play. Andres to throw again. Tries to throw over the middle and has it knocked down. A couple of Tigers up front. Somebody got a hand on it. May have been John Harris. We've been calling his name a bunch today. Harris has been chasing the DePaul quarterback throughout the afternoon, and this time I think he's the guy that knocks down that pass right at the line of scrimmage. It is second down and ten. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Wittenberg four on that defensive line. Starting to call the cadence. Andres running back sidecar left. Uh, snap to the face mask, catches it there and rolls right. Looking downfield, throws towards the end zone. Has a man all alone. It is caught by Logan Green, and he'll score a touchdown. 22-yard strike. Some confusion from the Wittenberg defense because they lost track of Logan Green, the junior, who was standing at the one-yard line near the pylon in the corner, goes in, and DePaul has its first touchdown of the day. It's now 31-15, to Wittenberg, 11-35 to play. Yeah, that was a shocker because, again, uh, the quarterback rolled left, and he came back around and looked over there to the sideline and looked like he he, he was going to uh, find, you know, maybe a defender over there. Nobody was standing next to Green, and the ball was thrown right on the numbers, and all he had to do was walk into the end zone for a touchdown. Jake Tanner converts on the PAT. So it's 31-16, to 16, Wittenberg in front of DePaul, 11-35. Remaining in the game. By the way, Westminster is leading Washington and Jefferson in the President's Athletic Conference. That's a Westminster team that Wittenberg beat in the season opener. Scott Benzel's the head coach there, the former Wittenberg assistant. Tigers have played each of the last two years against Westminster in the series opener. And they are right now leading Washington and Jefferson by a touchdown late in that game. So possibly a big-time upset, yeah, that's an upset on alert. the horizon in the pack. Yeah, that's a huge upset alert because, you know, those are two teams oh, that, uh, that battle all the time. And certainly a game that uh, would say a lot in that conference. And, and certainly uh, it's interesting. Each week you look at certain games in certain regions, and that's the big – regional game along with this one today here over in Springfield. Here's the kick from Jake Tanner. Jeff Tiffner to return, has it at the 12, out across the 20 to the 25, hit and taken down there. At the 25-yard line, Wittenberg will have this possession. Elsewhere around the nation today in Division Three football, Trine up in Michigan. They're on their way to winning the Michigan Conference. They have a 21-0 lead 
in their game. Frostburg State has elevated to number four in the country in the D3 football poll. That's the team that beat Wittenberg in the playoffs last year. They're up 24-17 over Montclair State. That uh, trying team back in the day, they had a pretty good basketball team. When I played over in Anderson, Indiana, Anderson College, they were Tri-State, and mm -hmm. now they're trying. But a great offensive program over there in basketball and, and then also in football, they've been very powerful. They're going to put eight seconds back on the game clock, and there will be 11.25 remaining. How about this score from the OAC, Coach? Unbeaten Marietta, coached by yeah. former Wittenberg Tiger Andy Waddle, Andy Waddle. leading 10th-ranked John Carroll, 17-14. to 14. Oh, I'd love to see an upset there. Love to see them win that. Three receivers left. They'll fake the handoff and swing it out to the near side. Kayser makes the catch. He's across the 30, and he's knocked off his feet at the 33. Here's a flag way back in the secondary for the Tigers. It was Tommy Gerhard, the center, who was down there blocking, and they're going to call... Uh, a personal foul, I assume, on Gerhard. He's the one that has his arms out, palms to the heavens. It is against the Tigers' senior center. Wow, and, and Joe Fincham is asking, what are we supposed to do? He's supposed to block. He's allowed to go down there and block. So that will back Wittenberg up. And Boy. Joe Fincham is still all over the linesman over here now, on the sideline. I've said it all day. He's wearing a red sweatshirt, but his face has been red all day. He has been all over the officials. And that time, I think he's, he, you know, every time he thinks he's right. But this time I know he's right because that was just his uh, center following out the play and finishing with a block. Now they're going to be about second and 22. Yeah, 23. from their own 18-yard line, second and 22. They'll. Swing it out to the right side on a pass to the tight end. Danke goes down the sideline to the 25 and is pulled down there. A gain of seven yards. 31 to 16, but a lot of time left here in this fourth quarter. 10.57 to go, Tigers lead. But, again, this is a DePaul team, as we've talked about, Scott, that has the right defense. And uh, if they could somehow manufacture some, some uh, yards and manufacture a score here, they could get back in it. Third down and 15. 10.37 left in the game. Kennedy from the shotgun. Four receivers, two to each side. Running back Kendall to the left. Kennedy rolling left. Looking downfield. He'll fire it Got deep Tiffer. for Tipper. At the DePaul 35, makes the catch. Jeff Tipper is off go. the races. Touchdown, Tigers from 74 yards away. The double move, and Tifter gets past the DePaul defense and goes for the touchdown. They caught DePaul again, blitzing, coming after on the edges, and Tifter went right down the middle of the field. He got behind the safety, and once he did that, oh, what a play by Jake Kennedy to loft it up there for the finish, and Tifter was able to catch it on his pad, and then it was high sailing all the way to the end zone and a big <laughs> touchdown, and how about... Tiffner with that play, and Kennedy now his third touchdown of the day. He now has 27 touchdowns on the year. Here's the PAT from Aquista. It is good. 10-24 left in the game. Wittenberg 38, and DePaul 16. This Tigers offense starting to find its mojo in the second half, and that time the deep ball, the double move from Tiffner yep. fooled the DePaul defense. They bit on the first move, and then he turned and cut back towards the middle of the field. Kennedy lost the the deep ball right down the middle, and Tiffner runs underneath it for the 74-yard uh, strike. And handed to that offensive line to give him enough time to be able to settle in there, step into his pass, and throw it about 60 yard, 50 yards for the touchdown. And again, the 74-yarder really Pops it open here for the Tigers after they had given up a, a score to DePaul. Jeff Tiffner has thrown for a touchdown today and now has a receiving TD as well. And, and Scotty, I was wrong. It's now 28 touchdowns for Jake Kennedy, and he needs how many more to, uh, to catch his coach? He needs six more to become Wittenberg's all-time touchdown passing leader 
for a career. He already has the yardage record on the return from the kickoff. Andy Hunt out to the 38. Stood up there, and the whistles will blow. So Reed Florence has how many? How many? 74. He has 74. That should be 66 now for Kennedy. Wow. How about that? And again, he continues to just explode on this year as far as having a banner year. That's the uh, senior out of Bell Fountain, Ohio, Jake Kennedy, and just a tremendous job that he has done in his in his uh, seasons here at Wittenberg. And how about Jeff Tiffner? What a year he's having. First and 10 to Paul from the 40. 10, 15 left in the game. Snap back to Andres. Looking to throw, rolling right. He's going to be hit. Fires to the near sideline incomplete. He was knocked off of his feet. The quarterback was by Kyle Derringer, who was charging after him. Andy Hunt was the intended target. Make it second down and 10. And, you know, Scott, that uh, touchdown by Tiffner, that's his 11th NCAC leading 11th touchdown catch of the year. He's the only guy in that kind of category in the league, and he continues to have a, a whale of a senior season. Second and 10 now. They'll throw it to Hunt on the Good swing read. pass to the near side. Troy Jones bottles him up, and Jones will tackle Hunt near the line of scrimmage. He'll actually lose a yard back to the 39. It'll be third down and 11. Andres is now 19 of 39 for 194 yards. On third downs today, DePaul just 3 of 13. Wow, that's huge. They came into the game with, uh, I think they were averaging 40% before the game started, so the Tigers have done a great job in third that Third and 11. Here's pressure. Andres. He is pressured, rolls left, still looking downfield. He's going to throw back to the middle, and it's caught, but a big hit applied. Jordan Berkey puts the <laughs> hit on Will right. Harris. Harris goes down at the Wittenberg 46. It will be a first down for DePaul. Harris jumps up and heads to the far sideline, a bit shaken up as Berkey gets the big hit. And, boy, even though they got the first down, the fans on this sideline, the red and white, really, really gave him a good cheer because that was one of the biggest hits of the year. First and 10 to Paul from the Wittenberg 45. 9.05 left in the game. Andres rolling left. He'll throw to that far sideline, broken up by Michael Ford. Trying to sneak it in for Logan Green past the first down marker. Great play by Ford, almost in that denial defense. You see in basketball, he got that left hand around, was able to just tap it away as they went to the sideline. Tremendous job by that young man. 22-point lead for Wittenberg, 9.02 left in the game. And from the shotgun injuries, looking to that far sideline to get the play call. He'll have Andy Hunt lined up as a receiver out to the left. Ethan Hudson wide right, Logan Green wide right. Tigers rushing Here just four. Come. Andres throws up the field. It's tipped and incomplete, almost intercepted. Troy Jones tipped it in the air. There's a flag down on the far sideline. Terrence Crow just missed an interception as his teammate batted it. And it's going to be Whoa, against DePaul. DePaul. They're going to wave off the flag, actually. The Tigers were clapping. Wittenberg was. So because the ball was tipped, they're going to wave off what I guess was maybe pass interference or defensive holding. Either way, it'll be from the Wittenberg 45, third down and 10. Eight fifty-seven remaining. Wittenberg led at the half by the score of 10 to six. They've scored 28 in the second half. They've outscored DePaul 28 to 10. Screen pass near side. Tanner Cleveland needs to get down to the 35 for a first down. He'll be shy. Lunges forward to the 37. Here's More a flags. late flag. Two of them after the play. They've stopped DePaul shy of the first down, but let's see what these late flags are about. If they're against Wittenberg, it'll be a DePaul first down. They never started the clock on that play, did they? Doesn't look like it. The officials meeting to talk about it. Two flags coming in 
after the whistles were blown, unsportsmanlike against Wittenberg. Wow, that's about the fourth one on them today. It's on Terrence Crow, 15 yards, and a first down for DePaul. So they will keep this drive going. They would have been shy of the first down otherwise and would have been faced with a fourth down. That's, I, I believe, Scott, that's about the, the fourth 15-yarder today. There have been a, a three of those and then maybe another type of play like that. I think they got caught for Yeah, the clock's still not running. Mask. It didn't run at all in that last play, Coach. Now they've got it going. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it didn't run. Looking to throw up the left sideline. Andres incomplete, targeting Andy Hunt inside the Wittenberg 10. For the Tigers, Danny Foster was on coverage, the freshman from Pickerington, Ohio, over in suburban Columbus. We've talked all day about uh, the DePaul defensive front against the run, but how about the, the Tigers? They've done a nice job also. They've pretty much shut down DePaul most of the day in, in running the football. So, again, Wittenberg right now wants to keep this DePaul team from scoring again leading 38 to 16. Here is Andres and the DePaul Tigers on second down and 10. Quarterback keeps it and gets a couple of yards down to the 21. It'll be third down and long, third and eight we'll say. Tigers have held DePaul to only 50 yards rushing. 8-18 left in the game. Three receivers left, one to the right. High snap for Andres. Throws the screen pass out to the left side good for defense, Hunt. Good trying defense. Trying to fight off Danny Foster. Foster would not allow him to break oh free. My. Here Are comes a late flag. As I don't know about that. Andy Hunt is taken out of bounds on the far sideline. With 8.07 to go. Let's see. I would be That just seemed a shocked. little surprising. I didn't see that. I don't get it. I, just, uh, I didn't see that. I, I think they could have let that go. I, I don't. I didn't see it. That's the fifth, like I said, the fifth penalty in this game that's been a 15-yarder. NCAC officiating at its finest again here because that's the second time on one of those late hits where yeah. the guy wasn't even out of bounds I hardly. It. I really didn't see that. First and ten to Paul. From the Wittenberg 12 now, 7.48 left in the game, and they'll hand it off for Cleveland. He spins forward down to the 11, a gain of one. 7.37 to go. It's Wittenberg 38, DePaul 16. Wittenberg with a win today would go to 7-0, 6-0 in the conference, run their regular season streak to 21 in a row. Yep, that'd be, that'd be a biggie. And a win today would be a win on the 95th year that this uh, stadium started. High snap, Andres rolling right. John Harris chasing, and now Andres is forced to just run out of bounds. Jonathan Say comes over to help and force the sophomore quarterback to tiptoe out of bounds. And they'll mark him back at the 15. So it'll be third down and 12 from the 15. They could get a first down. Without a touchdown, but they'll need to get inside the three for that. Under seven minutes remaining. If you're just joining us, Wittenberg led 10 to six at half. They've outscored DePaul 28 to 10 in half number two. Andres has a new running back in there. It's DeMarco Henry, and they'll move Henry to his left side. He likes to throw to Andy Hunt. He's and the guy they like to go to. throw up the middle to. of the field. It's tipped and broken up. It is knocked away by Thomas Scholl, the Tiger linebacker. The targeted receiver was Will Harris. Now it's fourth down, and Bill Lynch will He's keep his offense yep. out there. Down by 22. You almost have to now. 6.41 left to play. Tigers bring in another defensive back. Uh, they bring in, I think here, number 13. That's Feisinger. He's going to come in and, and play on that outside. Now it's a timeout for Bill Lynch and DePaul. Wittenberg today, 355 yards of offense. DePaul, 244. Wittenberg, 19 of 34 through the air from Jake Kennedy, 251 yards, although on a trick play, Jeff Tiffner, the receiver, <laughs> threw a touchdown pass to Kennedy 
from 14 yards out. Troy Clay is Wittenberg's top rusher this afternoon, 49 yards on 11 carries. They do have 90 yards, though, Scott, but they, they'd only been averaging, giving up about 39 a game, so the Tigers do a nice job there. Thad Snodgrass, three catches, 53 yards, a touchdown. Jeff Tipner, five receptions, 42 yards. Noah Danke, the tight end, getting in on the nice action. Game. He's had three catches for 41. By my count, counting Kennedy on that Philly special, if you will, the trick play, 10 different players have caught passes today for Wittenberg. That's pretty impressive. It, it really is, and how about this? Even the quarterback got a catch, and he got a touchdown Fourth today. and 12 so. here, Coach. They're going to throw it near sideline incomplete, looking for Harris. Andres underthrows him. Michael Ford covering for Wittenberg. So the Tigers' defense gets the stop, and it's a turnover on downs. So with 6.38 to go, Wittenberg will take over. Now a chance to salt this one away. Yeah, Tigers just need to get the ball, get a couple first downs, and finish this one out you got to like what you see here today as the DePaul Tigers come in here to try to see who the real Tiger is and it's going to be in the red and white today the Wittenberg Tigers play a very very powerful game and uh, put themselves in a great position to win the league again next week here's a handoff to Nick Kendall on first down running right out towards the hash mark bottled up and stopped for no gain the line of scrimmage is the Wittenberg 14 we come your way this afternoon from the cabin, as it's affectionately <laughs> known, our broadcast location here for the 2018 season, our temporary broadcast home next year. And who named it that? You did. How about that? You did. How from all of that? your days as an outdoorsman. <laughs> yes. Maybe Na five minutes. I don't know. Haven't been I mean, you're outside there. when you walk from your house that to the car, so that counts. That. That's true. Here's... For a second Ooh, down and nice 10, run. give to on, Kendall, on. stays on his feet, fights past First one down. tackler, spins past another, and gets out to the 23, close to the marker, about a yard shy. It'll be third down and one. I want to say hello to our buddy Dave Williams, who's tuned in from in. West Lafayette. Yes. How about that? My good friend Dave and Vicky over there, I think. I know he's going to be watching uh, the game tonight, and we're pulling for the Buckeyes. He's... He's actually not, not been a, a very good component of wins over there. The few times he's gone over, they've gotten beat. Third down and one. Hand off Jaheim Washington, and Jaheim pumping those legs, picks up the first down, out to the 27. So the Florida native, Washington, moving the sticks for Wittenberg, 514. Left to play in the game. Tigers of Wittenberg, 38. DePaul, 16. Rob Lehner here today, our former Wittenberg sideline reporter on these broadcasts many moons ago, former Wittenberg tennis player. Rob's got the family here doing, with Rob? him here today and listening to our broadcast from here at Edwards Mauer Field. Kennedy's pass incomplete to the far sideline looking for Snodgrass. If you look at it, Wittenberg today really had to kind of find a way to open up the offense, and they did so when Troy Clay came in as the tailback and started to pick up some good yardage on the ground. Once that happened, it opened up the passing game a bit as well. Second down and 10. Kennedy shotgun. Running back is Kendall to his left. They'll give it to Nick. Kendall up the middle at the 30, out towards the 35. Needed to get to the 38 for a first down, so it will be third down and three. Matt Coopy makes the stop for the DePaul Tigers, and now it's third and three with 4.35 to play. Want to say hello as well to Danny Palmer, who's tuned in online from Treasure Island, Florida. Says hello, and hello to you as well, Coach Scobie. Third down and maybe close to four here. 4.13 remaining, clock moving. Kennedy in the shotgun, high snap. He grabs it up over his helmet, gives to Kendall, who goes around the right end and gets out to the 37, probably about one yard short of the first down. You can listen to every Wittenberg football game, home and away on 
WUSO 89.1 FM around Clark County. Download the TuneIn Radio app. It is free. Search WUSO, and you can listen to the games on your smartphone or tablet. And, of course, the home games, live free streaming video. A.J. Meyer and the sports information folks doing a great job of providing the pictures with our broadcast. So Wittenberg will punt on fourth and one, and instead of Bryce Bailey, it'll be a new uh, punter in the game, and he'll kick it away and send it down inside the 30 to the 25. So DePaul will down it at the 25-yard line with 323 left in the game. Wittenberg 38, DePaul 16. Wittenberg will be 7-0 on the season. And it wasn't easy by any stretch, Coach, but, uh, boy, Joe Fincham's team really answered the bell in the second half. Really, it's the second straight week that they've come out and taken control of the game in the third quarter. Yeah, and I think that's a sign of a great championship team. They're able to uh, hang in there, play great defense, and then be able to uh, finish it out uh, once they stay with it. I, I, I want to say something about the coaching staff. I've seen this a couple times this year. They have been able to go in at halftime, regroup, and, and recreate uh, some things, maybe adjust some things that has really helped the Tigers. I, I have to hand it to them. Again, another one of those days where they were able to really readjust and get things going in the second half. First down pass was incomplete. Second down they handed off. And for DePaul, it's DeMarco Henry on the carry for a yard to the 26. Third down and nine, under three minutes left in the game. DePaul, three of 13 on third downs today. You know, the thing, again, I say, and I know it probably doesn't mean anything and you don't see it in the scoring column, but this is a very physical DePaul Tiger team, and they are the kind of team that can absolutely – uh, come after you defensively and make big plays. Here's they a deep a ball there. down the right side. It's going to be caught play. by Andy Touchdown. Hunt, and he is going to score. 74 yards as Andres goes down the right side for Hunt, and he'll go in for six. And with 2.32 left in the game, DePaul gets a little closer. It's now 38-22 to 22 and as with I said, the extra point coming. And as I, I was making that point that this is a very good football team, and Maybe the, uh, you know, their, their scoring column doesn't look very good and the fact that uh, you know, they don't have a very good record. But I'm going to tell you, they've played very tough in some games. They've got a great defense, and you saw right there, Andrews can, can make plays. They don't run it very well, but they've got a passing attack, and you just saw that on that touchdown. Snap back, and the kick is up by Tanner. It is good, 38-23, so it's only a two-score game. DePaul has two timeouts remaining, but they'll need an onside kick here to keep their chances alive, you'd figure. Wittenberg last week held Allegheny to just 14 points in that 41-14 to win, and it looked like today they were going to hold DePaul in the teens, but the deep ball touchdown for DePaul will get them to 23 on the board. So 38-23. Wittenberg by 15, and the Tigers are set to get the ball back. Next week, 1 o'clock kickoff. Our pregame show goes at 12.45 with the Wittenberg game day pregame show. So we hope you'll join us for Wittenberg and Wabash, the 2018 edition of that rivalry. And that's always a good one. That's one that everybody kind of marks circles uh, on their calendar. And after that game, the following week, it's the Monon Bell game. And that's a game with DePaul and Wabash, another big game there. Here's that onside kick, bounces inside the Wittenberg 45 and is downed near the 43. Jeff Tiffner, the guy there to grab it. Wabash has won today, 32 to seven. So the Little Giants are now six and one on the year. They've had a tough time in their special teams game, they have struggled to put up big offensive numbers during the course of the year. 
Their quarterback is Jake Reed. He's the transfer from Mount Union. He's a good player. Was buried on the Mount Union depth chart and transferred to Wabash. He threw for 245 yards today. Yep, he can he can uh, dot the I. He's a very good passer and very smart. Kennedy hands to Clay, and Troy Clay gets a yard, maybe two out near the 45. 219 to play here this afternoon. Wittenberg and DePaul putting a cap on this 13th go around head to head. Wittenberg will have won 10 of the 13 all time. Tigers now at 118 yards rushing. And again, this is a defense that was only giving up 39 a game. From the shotgun. 21 consecutive wins with the win today. And it's on the 95th anniversary of the opening of this field, which happened back in 1923 when the Tigers began this great, great tradition. Hand off to Clay out to midfield. Yeah, the dedication of this facility, which was, of course, then called Wittenberg Stadium, happened on this date in 1923, 95 years ago. They had actually played one game here previous to that. Two weeks earlier, they beat Antioch College 79-6 to and then played Ohio Wesleyan on the day that this stadium was dedicated. Of course, since then, they've added the names of Bill Edwards and Davey Mauer, the Hall of Fame coaches, to call it Edwards Mauer Field. Next year, you'll have the steamer as part of this facility. We'll be broadcasting from our new booth inside the indoor facility behind the home side stands, or the only stands here at Wittenberg as it is. Here's a handoff again, and carrying for the first down is Clay, and that will probably do it. DePaul still has two timeouts, but they're not going to use them. We're under a minute remaining in the football game, and so Wittenberg will win it here today, 38-23. And they will, in fact, be 7-0 on the season and run that regular season winning streak to 21. Taking care of business here today against the DePaul Tigers. Kennedy takes the snap, takes a knee at midfield, and that will do it. DePaul will not use their timeouts. Final score today, Wittenberg 38, DePaul 23. The Wittenberg Tigers are now 7-0. DePaul Tigers fall to 3-4, 3-3 in the conference, and it sets the stage for that big game next week with, once again, the NCAC title hanging in the balance, Wittenberg against Wabash. Stay with us. Post-game show comes your way next. 38-23, Wittenberg over DePaul here today in Springfield on the Tigers Sports Network.
Wittenberg sings the fight song. The Tigers players celebrate another win, 7-0 on the season, and ranked eighth in the nation in the coaches poll, Coach Scobie. Good job by Wittenberg to make those halftime adjustments after leading 10-6 going into the locker room. They come out and score 28 points in the second half. They take control of the game, and they go on to get yet another win. Yeah, a tremendous win by the Tigers, and any time you can win a game here against the DePaul Tiger team, a Bill Lynch coach team, you've got to feel good about yourselves. And it was a great job in the second half to, to be able to regroup at, uh, at, at, at half and get her done. Tremendous job, great passing by Jake Kennedy. Some uh, plays out of that uh, gift bag that, that certainly Joe Fincham has, a little throw from uh, Tiffner to Kennedy. That was kind of fun to watch. But how about the defense in the critical times they were able to make good stops and give their offense a chance to put numbers on the board. Tigers win today, 21st consecutive win here on the field, and they do it, as we talked about earlier, 95 years ago on this field, the, the field was dedicated. Tigers get it done today. They sure do, and we will talk to a couple of these Wittenberg yeah, Tigers to. coming up in just a minute. Give the Wittenberg defense credit as well because they were able to keep Chase Andres on the move. The DePaul sophomore quarterback didn't get a chance to get settled and, and make many throws today, and that's a credit to the uh, defensive line, the front four, and the linebacking core as well, keeping him moving and keeping him out of the pocket. Uh, obviously helped. He's an athletic quarterback, so he made some plays. He's going to be pretty good yeah, going forward for DePaul. He's only a sophomore. But the so Wittenberg he'll be a good defense one. wins that challenge here this afternoon. So. It looks like Denison is going to go on to win as well today. Denison beating Ohio Wesleyan over in Granville. So you'd be looking at Wittenberg at 6-0, Wabash at 5-1, Denison 4-2, Allegheny, DePaul, Worcester, all 3-3 three three in the conference. Ohio Wesleyan 2-4, Hiram 2-4, Oberlin 1-5, Kenyon 0-6. So here we are again. Wittenberg and Wabash separated by just one game. They're the top two teams in the standings, and they'll be set to clash head-to-head -head next Saturday, and those games never seem to disappoint when Wittenberg and Wabash get together. Always a lot of fun, and we always look forward to great rivalry games, and certainly that game today is going to be a uh, – or, or next week is going to be a great one, and, and we always seem to have uh, the very best at the end playing for the championship, and that's what it's going to be like next week. Certainly you want to get out here and get here early because it's going to be a packed house. You want to have all of your red and white on. You want to be prepared to take on Wabash. You want to be able to get your, your, uh, your, your very best out here on this day. All the Springfield fans, all of the local fans need to come out next week to help this Tiger team get a win against Wabash. And uh, we're hoping to get a couple players. I think we're going to get Jeff Tiffner, hopefully Jake Kennedy, Maybe Thad Snodgrass and maybe Adam Aquista. We're hoping they'll come up. We'll get a chance to talk to them here in our post game. Scott, it's been a fun day. And, of course, a lot of high school players have come to the game today to see A lot of recruits the again here today. And uh, this is a good one. I know I talked to Joe Fincham on Thursday night. He was looking forward to having a bunch of youngsters here to see how great it is to be a Tiger. And, uh, boy, what a great day for this uh for this football team. 355 yards of offense for Wittenberg, 244 for DePaul. Jake Kennedy was 19 of 39 through the air for 251. Chase Andres was 13, was a 19 of 39 for 194 yards. Kennedy had two touchdowns, two interceptions. Andres, one touchdown, no interceptions. Jeff Tiffner threw a touchdown pass on that trick play, and uh, the Tigers get the win hey here. Guys this afternoon over DePaul and some of the Tigers players making man. their way in yep. here to the broadcast to go, booth. Way to go, Adam. Way to go, guys. Really proud of you. We've got uh, – We'll start with Jeff Tiffner. Let's start with Jeff. Jeff, uh, I knew you could catch the ball, but all of a sudden we look around and you're getting that ball and throwing it out of there. Well, and uh, you, uh, after you got that uh, touchdown pass, I thought, my goodness, you're going to get, you're gonna get the, those – those arms out and show us a little muscle. <laughs> How did it feel to throw a touchdown pass? Oh there? man, it was fantastic. Uh, you know, as 
pretty much just as good as scoring a touchdown. So anytime that we can get points on the board, I don't care if I throw it, catch it. If one of these other guys catches it, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to score. Early in the game, you had gone up. You got squeezed on one of those plays and got popped really good. It looked like you might have gotten the wind knocked out of you. Is that what happened? Yeah, on the it just play? got the wind knocked out of me a little bit, yep. Your Tiger team gets it done today. This guy right here throws three more touchdowns, and it seems like the, the, uh, your team has been able to find a way to get it done each week. You knew coming into this game they had a great defense, and you guys were able to make the right plays at the right time. How does it feel uh, to have this guy on your side uh, when you're fighting a battle like this? Oh, anytime we have Jake throwing us the ball, you know, he's a three-year starter. He's throwing a lot of touchdown passes. Um, he's played a lot of games. You know, anytime we got him throwing us the ball, we know all we got to do is just get open, run good routes, and he's going to deliver us the ball. I'm going to let you hand it off to Thad Snodgrass. Again, Thad, you had a great game. You got that first touchdown. Yeah. Uh, again, you've been a guy that's been able to be one of the guys that, that uh, Jake can throw to. What was the play today that you, uh, you ran when you got the touchdown play, and how have you enjoyed being a Tiger? Uh, we just, uh, it was just a simple, simple little uh, post route. And you know, I really enjoy being a Tiger, especially being from Springfield. It means a, a little more, a little bit more to me because it's my hometown. So I'll try to put everything. Now, I love that old Wildcat. You got hit, popped really good, and you're laying there. And I know it felt, you felt the pain, but you jumped right up. Yeah. And you got in the head of that defender, and then right after that, you came back with another big play. Talk about what it means to 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 be a, a Tiger and how tough Tigers are. And, and especially in big games, because a lot of people want to know who the real Tiger was today, and I think it's in red and white. Yeah. Talk about that. Well, I just feel like we preach toughness the whole time, and if I would have just sat there and laid on the ground, I wouldn't have been toughness at all. So, so you're just, saying I, Tiffner is not as tough as you? Is that, is that <laughs> what you're not saying? Not no, I'm messing with you. I'm just messing with you. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. Hey, it's got to feel good to, to be a part of a winning program, and next yes. week you get ready to play – the big one, and that's uh, the one against the other yeah. team that has a W. Yes, sir. Yeah, good luck Good luck next week. Yes, sir, thank you. Hey, Adam Aquist is with us, and Adam, you are uh, able to, to get a, a kick there. Uh, their, their guy, Tanner, pretty good uh, kicker, but you had some great kicks, and, and your leg has been really important. Talk about what it felt like to be out there. A windy day. There are going to be situations where we're going to need yes, you sir. down the stretch. How does it feel to, to, get, to help your team? For sure, yes, sir. I mean, we, uh, especially with the specialist group, I got uh, three young guys, one sophomore, two freshmen. I'm just trying to teach them uh, consistency and doing the same thing every week. And, like, no matter what kick it is, it's just it's its, its own kick by itself. Mm -hmm. Whatever you've done in the past, whatever you're going to do in the future, it's just that kick. Every every single one is its own. And playing with the wind, we got out here early, and we were uh, just kind of kicking it on both, both ends of the field, trying to see uh, what type of adjustments, what type of uh, angles I'd have to use to uh, – play the wind a little bit I think on that kick you had earlier I think that could have gone uh, you know a few more yards I mean you really got a boom on that talk about special teams because I know right. Joe Fincham talks about a couple things he always talks about flipping the field how important it is is to be able to have uh, great special teams but right. also his big thing is field position you guys have always right. been really good at that a couple times a day you put him in bad situations right I mean I'm going to talk about kickoff especially uh our kickoff team, we gotta be, uh, we gotta work on getting that field position. Um, with the uh, with the field goals, I'm getting down there and just giving us a chance. You know, if we can't score, just giving us a chance to put points on the board. Right. So, and uh, I mean, our punts, we had some good punts, and just flipping the field is one of the biggest things. You know, if you can give a team uh, a long field to go, it's it's gonna be tough for them. And I think that starts, you know, with uh, kickoff because that's one of my teams. So Absolutely. I'm gonna get on those guys because I think honestly we need to do better. Uh, yeah, we won, but you know it's gonna come down to it later in the year. And we're going to step up. Your coach says you haven't played your best game yet, and I got to believe you guys feel that. So right now, that's very true. I think we uh, we're still we still got a game out there for a full 60 minutes for the whole team, and uh, once that's there, it's going to be scary. It must be nice to have this guy on your side. Oh yeah, very uh, nice. Yeah, let's talk to Jake hey, a little Jake. bit. Now, Jake, you again had a great game. Uh, you got popped really good. We were talking about how you were holding your hand a little bit, and immediately after that, guess who gets to throw you the pass? Mm -hmm. Tiffner goes out there and rolls one to you. But your hand got healed kind of quick when you made that catch because you had that little, uh, you know, that little squeeze in the end zone. How did that feel to catch it and get a touchdown? Oh, it was nice, definitely. Uh, we called the same play last year, and I kind of got hawked down uh, <laughs> after about 25 yards. So 
it was a perfect opportunity. Uh, you know, we flipped the field on him, had the ball inside the 20, and it was a perfect play call. Now, when you make a call like that, does Tiffner go, like, the, does he get excited? You can't really give it away. What, what are you guys thinking about? And, and I want to ask uh, uh, Tiffner first, what were you thinking about when, you're, when you heard the play? Because you know you got to turn around and throw it back the other way. Is it something that, you, you, you know, what were you thinking? Uh, so we work on a couple of trick plays every week during practice. You know, that way when we come out here to the game, we can, you know, go out and perform it to the best of our ability. So uh, when, when we called the play on the sideline, I was like, all right, let's go score this touchdown yeah. now. That's, that's easy. You made a couple other throws, but I thought you were able, your offensive line, you brag about them a lot. I thought they gave you a lot of time today. Uh, you guys also ran it for about 118 yards, which, again, you guys lead in that court category too. But how good does it feel to be able to put some points on the board and have a good offensive day against maybe one of the best defenses in the country? Oh, it's, it's a great feeling. Uh, you know, as you saw, we started off a little bit slow, but – that's, that's the best thing I love about this team is, you know, all 11 guys are going to stay by my side the whole time. You know, I missed a couple of throws, I, you know, threw a couple of picks, but at the end of the day, they still got faith in me and they know I'm going to bounce back. So how it's much nice confidence, how much confidence is this for all of you guys as far as going into this game next week? Of course, you're going to have a lot of fan support. I got to believe the whole town should come out next week. Absolutely. But talk about how, how this confidence boost really helps you for next week. Oh, it's it's a huge win at the end of the day. You know, it, it was kind of inconsistent at times, but at the end of the day, we're just glad to get out of here with a W. I mean, that's one of the best defenses in the country, so we came up, put 38 points on them. Your it's coach a had a red sweater on today, red sweatshirt, and a few times his face matched his <laughs> sweatshirt. Not happy with some of the calls, but I got to tell you, you can make him happy next week if you guys come and play the way you did today. Good luck. And congratulations Thank on you. the win. Thank you. Appreciate Way to go. It. Tiger up, guys. We'll see you next week. Fantastic job by the Tigers today. And, again, Scotty, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to talk to these guys. They've got faces for TV. i got a face for radio. But I got new – Snodgrass especially has got a face for TV. But i got to tell you, what a great group of guys and a big win for Joe Fincham today, Scott. We're so proud of these guys. want to thank Mr. Tiffner for our photo ops today. And, we just had a great time, and what a big win. And, and I'll tell you, Scott, this is a team that this has to be a great confidence boost for them going into next week. Yeah, I think so. I mean, to uh, especially grab a hold of the momentum in this game like they did in the second half, that's yes. big going forward. And you hope that uh, it leads into, uh, like you said, a good performance next Saturday. They'll need it, of course, against uh, a Wabash team that, even though they've been inconsistent at times this year, have put themselves in position to control their own destiny in the conference race. So good win. Joe Fincham, I'm sure, will take it. The Tigers can look forward now to that big game next Saturday. It's also senior day because yes. it's the final home game of the regular season. Hard to believe already we're wow, there. amazing. But, uh, but, yeah, good win today for Wittenberg as they defeat DePaul by the final score of 38-38. Uh, to 23. Coach Scoby, as always, Good thanks. One, brother. Always nice enjoy job. working with you, and I will see you next Saturday right back here. Can't wait. That'll do it for our entire crew, for our producer Ben Helmus, for the Wittenberg Athletic Department, for everyone involved with the Tiger Sports Network. This is Scott Leo saying thanks for tuning in. The final score, Wittenberg 38 to Paul 23. This has been Wittenberg Football on the Tigers Sports Network.